do I look like I'm in pass? Because he's, <coughs> he's he's changed his mic over him. I mean, changed his um, soundboard over him. Voice. So people fucking... will start coming over now. We yeah. think. But the thing is, is like he. Um, no, I've got to bring up Alan's link. Yeah, oh, shit. Is that the? Um, it's all right. We're not live yet. No. Um. He. I, I gave him the the a Google Google reference page to his local Holland Amateur Radio Club. And we're about to go live. Here are the top search results. Yeah. And um, yeah, well, he said he was going to go, but um, I don't know if he has. I don't. Yes, think we're live. Will. Sorry, I was talking That's... and um, my thumb hadn't hit the uh, unmute button. Apologies. It's unforgivable. It's it's it's, it's, it's all good, all Ellen. It's all good. Good we'll evening, just Montreal. Chat. We'll just chat here until other people turn up, Alan. Yeah, I'm I'm slamming the um, th the link into the um, link. Jose's thingy. I'm gonna yeah. just I'm literally I know it's I know it's going to be a little bit superfluous, but I'll slam it in ours, including the link to where everybody already is. But yep, <laughs> you know, one of them things. Um. Yeah, so I doubt that he'll actually go, but you know. The thing is, is he turned around and asked for the raw data. Um, and it's like I was talking to Sean Huffett af afterwards and I said, well, how raw does he want this data? I can give it to him in ones and zeros, but he's not going to understand that. <laughs> how raw do you want this data? <laughs> <laughs> let alone if I um, turn around and give him the data straight off the computer, he's still not going to understand it. You know, the, the, the biggest no. problem that they have is that they just don't understand. They don't understand the, the size of the world. They don't understand the concept of three-dimensional um, things. They, they have a problem with con the concept of reality. You know, they want to feel special. They need to feel special. The only way they can feel special is if this big blue ball that we live on has been made by some divine entity. And um, to do that, you know, then they feel special because they feel that they've been put here on earth by someone or whatever, you know? Right. Well, yeah, it's the idea. I, I particularly enjoyed the idea that it's some divine calling. <laughs> We've even got evangelists out there. With leaflets and everything, it's kind of I don't know, yeah. weird. I mean, chemtrail believers aren't doing that. No, no, and it is. It's a religion. It's um, some people have used the other word, but oh, I'm not going to say that. It's you know, the, a cult. Many people have said that, but it has I, some I, of the definitions. I, I don't want some to... of the. Uh, it does. It does have some it, of the elements of a cult. It, You're not it wrong. It does, but not all. But I, but, but I don't think it has enough of the um, items that are in that checklist that is used for deciding if something is a cult for it to actually be a full no. cult. No. Why don't you not. stick the checklist up and we'll have a look it's at them? Because I really like to see it. Yeah, it's it's cult like. I think it's the best we could do. Is is that Bob? That is Bob. Bob the science I guy. Recognize hey guys. I recognize Bob. Chatted with Bob. Hello, I hello, have. Bob. Oh, no. Hello. First, first, first time in the meet. Uh, first time in a chat room with you. So, um, who's I'll, this? I'll, it's uh, Peter Harrington, just above. Well, I'll probably oh, be gotcha. below you. Yeah, no, I see you're right next to me. Um, Here, let me uh, let me fix this. This just gives it my the name of my computer, which and I happen to be using on the studio desktop right now. Yeah. Uh, would you it. like us to change the name for you, or would oh, you like no, to change no. it yourself? Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> I'll, I'll get it. I've got a great name. 
What what's name? What's that? Um, I think it should be Princess Butterfly. <laughs> Princess Butterfly. <laughs> So what is it? I thought it was quite suitable. Well, that's that's rather demeaning. <laughs> I thought I, I, and I like favorite. it. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to come in and say, "Who is? What am I? Where am I in?" Dude? Alan, you got to change yours to something. It's like Captain Botulism. No, just um. No, the- I like Captain Smegma. That's really. Very nice. I, I, it has a viscous <laughs> property to it. It just it's, sticks oh, with you, you know? Oh, oh, oh. All right. So, I think we uh, all ought to change our names to something something that'll, that'll so be kind of interesting. So, Bob, something would, medical, you, like, something would you like this short list? A short list at 10 signs of cults? Or would you like the Colts, well, we go, one, we Colts 101? If you want. Colts we can go with a short list because you know short. I have a pretty short attention span. Well, that's what I was thinking. I can I can give you the list of what I think, what I think. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, what 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 you what you typically see in a cult? Cults typically yeah. uh, have um, a charismatic leader. With yes. Well, a, well, hang on. With that, with that, I'll just read on. the the number one. Go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. I'll see. You've, you've yeah. already hit the number one. It's go on. The group is focused on a living leader to whom the members seem to display an excessive zealous. So you've hit that one on the head. Right. So um, essentially that would be Eric Dubay. Uh, what they do is, uh, in a cult, they ascribe, uh, if you will, uh-huh. a level of holiness to that leader. So they would basically speak his name in reverence and his, and then uh, use quote his words as scripture. Yep. So, for example, so in this in this instance, they would do, say again. Oh, I think that was Ken saying hello. Oh, Hi, okay. Ken. Again. So, uh, in the case of Dubai, they quote Dubai um, as if it's verified fact. For example, they will say. The horizon rises to eye level. The horizon rises to eye level. That's something that Eric Dubay came up with. And Eric Dubay's never been higher than an airliner. So how would he know? He has never done that measurement. He's never confirmed that the horizon rises to eye level. But he made that statement. Um, and that's what they that they recite those things. Water finds its level. They got that from Eric Dubay. Um, uh, water cannot confirm to the exterior of a sphere. They got that from Eric Dubay. The list just goes on. So they quote him, they quote Dubay as if, uh, what he says is is verified, um, demonstrable fact. So, What's the next one? So number two it's would gospel. be. Well, yeah. number number two would be, the group is preconce. Uh, sorry, the bru- the group is preoccupied with bringing in new members. There you go. Hence, hence YouTube. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we're two for two. Let's keep going. Uh, number three. The group is preoccupied with making money. Um, Fe Core comes to mind, but um, you can yeah. use you can use Nathan Oakley or any other Nathan that's out there. Um, Riley didn't he make all of his money so that they paid for his um, his law degree? Well, what they're doing right now is they've figured out there is a new way. They've discovered a new, a lovely way of milking this uh, conspiracy idea, and though that that uh, is simple in one word, and that is conferences. Yep. So, um, FE Core produces uh, content. For example, FE Core produces content that you have to pay for uh, to get access to, and then you have the conferences, which basically it amounts to you go along and talk to people and watch videos in a room with other people uh, that you could do at home and you pay for the privilege. So, yeah. Okay, so three for three. Uh, questioning doubt. Sorry, questioning doubt and disin- uh, dis- uh, dissent are uh, discouraged or even published. Have you guys seen the videos where Eric Dubay dresses up as all the other prominent flat earthers that have <laughs> oh, watched yeah. him, including Orphan Red? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think we're I think we're pretty much got that one covered, don't you? Yes. 
All right, dissent yeah. is definitely not allowed. That's why they have mods. And as soon as you go in, I found that out very early. As soon as you go in and you disagree, you say, yeah, why do you, even if you just ask them why they believe this, they ban you. And anyone that uh, has any doubts, man alive, they just jump on them. Go on. Well, yep. Four well, four. I, was, I was just going to say the perfect example of that would be a Mr. Oakley, who you go in there and say something he, he doesn't like, mute. Yep. So four for four. Go ahead. Next no, one. The number five. Um, Mind numbing techniques such as meditation or chanting. You ever listen to an Eric Dubé video? Yeah, yeah well, I'll tell you. Uh, what. Yeah. I, I, I'd have to say no on that one. No, but you, you're right. It is what? a no. You haven't listened However, to him? <laughs> no, I, it, he, you're right. It, it is a no on that one. However, if you listen to Eric Dubé, his sort of monotone droning delivery is i i would say to uh, the gullible mind i would say it's quite hypnotic <clears throat> so now the can... other thing that you you have to look at too would be uh phuket word and his use of nlp yeah what use of what use of neuro-linguistic programming nlp it's a uh, conversational hypnosis and what they do mm -hmm. is they they have certain anchors and then they reinforce it. You notice how often he says, yeah, after making a point like that is, um, that's a trait of British people. You'll hear, um, Dave, allegedly Dave doing that. You'll hear Roxanne doing that. You'll hear, but it's um, actually a technique known as NLP. It? It's, yeah. it's, it's, um, conversational hypnosis. And the idea is, is to reinforce it and make it your thought. You know the horizon rises to eye level, yeah, and you know water what, levels. If you, you put a water level up, yeah, it'll um, it'll come to your eye level because the horizon always rises to your eye level, and your eye level is always at the horizon. You know, it's a it's a technique of conversational mm. hypnosis that they use. Especially Nick's very very good at it. Yes, yeah, some of them, I, uh, I see where you're going, Bob, but but I, I have to disagree on this one. There's no I, I, I gotta say no. Sorry. So, so well, I, just, again, just to I confirm. Agree. Well, we encourage disagreement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, just to confirm, mind-numbing techniques such as meditation on chanting. Oh, okay. Such but, as meditation, mind-numbing yeah. techniques. Such I think that would probably be meditation or chanting, but not limited to obviously. So maybe if instead of a full mark, we should give it half a mark because Dubé does. Uh, they really do use um, they use they use techniques in the in how they deliver. They basically say no curve has ever been proven, which is false. Um, I don't know if that could be included, but I I would just include the Dubay's droning delivery and the use of NLP. Put it as a half, I would say. But go, go ahead. What's the next one? Uh, well, that's the five. So I'll oh, it's five. To, that's five. It's, it, that's 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 four and a half out of five. Yeah, yeah. So it, it doesn't it doesn't have a. Um... Pete, Peter, could I just make you host for a couple of minutes Sorry. so that I can go and deal with something? At least you then you can let anybody in if they. You, you uh... can do whatever you want to do, Ellen. I'll stay here until you come back. Yes. Four hours later. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, not quite. <laughs> Thank I'm you. Now, not a problem, Alan. And he was never heard from again. <laughs> He's going to have lunch and a nap and come back <laughs> and see time, time, you know, after, after oh. having a pint. Oh, I'm sorry. You couldn't go to work or sleep? Oh. It's, it's, a, sorry about it's that. all right, Bob. It's only 4.23 in the morning here, so I'll keep going for a couple more hours. No, I, w I would say that you guys I are up say... way too late. <laughs> yeah, you really are. We have to if uh, we have to have, want to have this fun. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say that we really would call Fat Earth a cult. What I would say is it has cult-like tendencies. Uh, elements, yeah. Tendencies. Well, the problem is, is we're going down the list right now, and they're running ninety percent uh, already. So, do we yeah, have number true. six? No, no, no. It's it's um, just five, top five. Just, okay, top so they're only ninety percent cult. So. Well, with, the, with, with the thing about the leader, um, you'll hear a lot of flat earthers say, screw Dubai. What they don't realize is essentially what they're doing is everything they think, everything they think comes from Dubai, the phrases they use. And the other part of that is that they use the exact same phrase. And I think 
the uh, there was a podcast um, I listened to, re-listened to it because it was really good, and the podcast is called Oh No, Ross and Carrie, and that's the name of the podcast. And it's these two pe- these two people, and what they do is they join these these uh, groups and sort of pretend to be in with the group to learn about the group, and then they report on their findings, and then they have their podcast. Yep. They did flat. They did flat Earth and spent four weeks on it. And so they said, "Well, we visited this person with it." And when they were out, they're wrapping up. One of the things they said was they noticed it wasn't just. And other people have said this too. They noticed it wasn't just that they had the same kind of ideas. It is that they would say the same things the exact same way. Now that is something you find in in groups like the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Mormons. If you study either of those groups, which I have, you will find out. And you'll see that they use, they don't just use the same, have the same ideas. They use exact same words. So that's something. And then they use the exact same camera. They all use the exact same camera. What other group does that? You know, you have to kind of look at that as quoting scripture. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as a good way of doing it. It's, and that, you know, that would argue that it's a religion. But, it has the elements, yes. Yeah, so, you, but it has uh, some elements, and they take it from religion. They take it from the creationists. That you know, the second law of thermodynamics argument is pure creationism. It's um, it's we've chatted about this before, Bob. I think I can't remember how much detail we got into. It's been a while, um, but we've we've talked at length um, several several months ago, probably six or seven or eight months ago now. Um, yeah, there are a lot of elements, and um, I found it. I found that most most flat earthers, uh, if they are religious, they use King James only, and then they'll also believe in a young Earth. Then they'll also have other elements that are in common. And if they're not religious, um, they will still be uh, conservative in outlook. So they'll ninety percent of the flat earthers are are Trump supporters and um, have that sort of outlook, which is weird because if you think of Reagan, you know, the Reagan era, um, conservatives now are not conservatives then. Liberals now are not liberals, we're not liberals then, they're different things. But anyway, they do tend to have that sort of trend towards that that end of it, end of things. Um, and even when I've had conversations with people that have been all cursy and sweary and, and pretty nasty, they will still they will still have you know conservative a conservative bent in the end, or you know even religious. And I just want to cringe because that's not, you know, no. <laughs> that's mm, a no. I don't think of, I don't think yeah. their politics have anything to do with governance or or nation or nation. You know. I thought about something the other day, and I don't know. I, I specifically don't like to get into politics. Yeah, no, I agree too. Yeah. But I, I, I have to ask something, and that is, you know, what will it take for Republicans to hold Trump accountable for his actions? And oh. my only answer is for him to become a Democrat. <laughs> And well, the, <laughs> I like that, Bob. But I am. Um, well, please I, feel you, free to use it. Just don't attribute it to me, because I think a lot of my people are Trumpies. Yeah, um, uh, I um, <laughs> I don't like to get into either. And what I I try to avoid doing is I try to avoid um, I try to avoid sort of uh, giving people my little zingers. Or uh, I'm not I'm not criticizing you for doing that. That that was a fun one. Um, because once, once I try to avoid getting pigeonholed um, on on either side, um, a number of people are like that. That I found is Carlos is like that, Alan is like that, um, a number of, of people like that. You, you don't pigeonhole me. I, you know, let's talk about this topic. I did get sucked into it one time, and I quit looking at flat Earth for about three months because of it. Um, someone tried their best to trigger me in a chat. Um, it was on. Uh, Sean G's channel, and I got so frustrated, I wanted to throw my phone on the floor. Um, and I realized, wow, you know, uh, this is this is impacting me emotionally. And so I, I, uh, 
got rid of my channel on Discord, whatever, got rid of my account on Discord, and I, I left it alone for a while. And only once I thought I got the handle on it, then I came back in, which is why I'm here now. I just came back in and thought, yeah, I think I can, I think I can deal with this. Because um, it's, it's the way that, that online people have the ability to push your buttons. They, especially someone like Chris or uh, Anthony Riley or Spurs Chemo, very, very much interested in getting a reaction it's a little snide it's a snide little comments and they're just you just think are you trolling me because that's what it feels like oh. well you notice in the last few that you know there's been a lot of personal attacks directed at me uh, because i worry yeah. them. They, and they, they the thing that people. frustrates them oh yeah they don't like me very much at all but uh you know the thing that really frustrates them and makes them angry is i laugh at them when they call me names <laughs> And, you know, that's best fine. response. It's the best yeah. response. Well, you know, I don't give them the attention that they want and I don't let them trigger me. And I still, okay. So getting back to the photograph, the clouds are clearly above the mountaintop. You can clearly see it. You can it's see it. Yeah. Cloud. And boom, 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 boom. Just tear their argument to pieces. It's, it's like the other and day. They, and don't let them distract you by calling you names. It's like the other day when I, um, popped my cherry in one of these discussions with Art when um, Big Blue was in there and the whole talk about uh, um, the the laser bounce off the moon descended into the um, radio bounce off the moon. Um, I couldn't hold myself back because I knew a little bit about that because I'd actually done it. And, you know, when I went in there, I thought, no, do the, do the right thing, try and keep calm. Yep. Um, talk to Actually, him rationally. Yeah. And I tell you what. Go ahead. Sorry. sorry. Oh, it's all right. And I, I kept as calm as I possibly could through the whole conversation. Um, I presented all of my pieces of evidence to him. Um, I explained to him why he was wrong in the way he was thinking, because you can't make an assertion if you've never even tried it. Maybe you should go and try it type of thing. And I really tried to lead him down the garden path, but you know, like he got halfway down that garden path and it was like what Sean Hufford said in the end, no matter what evidence he gives you, if he gives you every piece of evidence you're going to ask for, you're just going to say, no, I wasn't there to say it. Uh, uh-uh. uh, you know, well, and- they can't accept any evidence. It's not in their narrative no. and they will find a reason to do it. You know, like the other day I put that water level out. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, of course I did. But some flurf came on out and said, and not a single one of those pictures was the water level. You know, could you draw a, draw a line between all three, three levels? And I go, exactly. And, you know, it's just like, you, you intended that? Yeah, they're handheld photographs, not from a tripod, sitting in my office. They're off just a tiny bit, and you can clearly see that they are off because of the triple water. You can get a very precise reading off of those things. You don't realize that, do you? Oh, those obviously. were put out because it just comes right to your eye that they're a little bit off. Well, I was going to say, gonna the, say um, to you, I'll, I'll just be a second. And then you Thanks. can go. I was just going to say to you, Bob, about your fantastic water level ID. I've just got one um, upgrade on it that you need to do. Stick a string line across the the big circle of the water level. Because then that way, if they're using it for camera work, they can then shoot through the string line. For example, if they're shooting at the horizon, line up with the water level on the far side and they'll be able to see the string line at the levels on both sides as well so that that way there's actually a defined line going across the the picture being taken as well well the only problem that i had for that is the ability of people to actually adequately place the string based on whatever water level they have in there yeah because unless the only way that you can correctly place that string is line it up first and then put it in the only real you know there's been some talk too about making four loops 
And the reason that I'm going to argue against that is that just makes it into a ball and it limits the Next. places that you can put it. Yes. As a T, you can actually, you have so much more flexibility in how to place it. And the final thing is, instead of using Windex, which happened to be the only thing that I had available that was colored, you know, because of the bubbles and stuff, I think that it would probably be better to use uh, 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 car you washer fluid. You don't say colored anymore, Bob. Now you say liquid of color. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell you to use methylated I, spirits and call it a spirit level. I just need a moment to recover from that little politically correct comment. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I was just going to use windshield washer fluid because that won't foam. You don't want to use something thick like a soap because that'll coat the inside and it'll just give you bad. You want something that's very, you know, you could yeah. use Jameson, yeah. but that's yeah. a hell of a waste. You, 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 you also need to use something that's got a very small meniscus. So you're not going to get the... Um, the error of the uh, of the fluid either climbing up the walls of the the clear tube as well. That was another that was another thing that was brought up, and you know I've got to tell you something. You know, that, that's a valid point. Uh, it's a very valid point, which is why you wouldn't want to use maple syrup or anything for my Canadian friends. <laughs> but <laughs> but the thing about it is, is you're doing a rough water level as a home experiment. This is not a precision um, measuring column in a laboratory where you have to sit down and you have to average the top from the bottom of the meniscus and, and properly read the meniscus to, you know, within a fraction of a millimeter. This is something that you're looking at 20 feet away on a camera to get a rough idea of where a level is. And the difference between the error that you would get from a meniscus and the drop in the horizon, you know, is a factor of a hundred. Yeah. So I don't think it's going to make enough of a difference to be effective on what we're using it for. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a thought. Uh, and I don't. I don't know how feasible this would be or how functional it would be, but it was. It was an idea that I thought I'd present to you, Bob. Um, what about floating a small uh, styrofoam bead in each of those arms. Would that be uh, something that could be done? That's actually a pretty good idea and have something that was very clearly uh, a, an object of color. But uh, <laughs> here's the problem that you're going to run into. And this is one of the things that, you know, I don't know if you realize this in the design. All three arms are communicating with each other. Yeah, they meet at the top. So they meet, at, they meet at the top or wherever it is. And the problem is you get two beads on one arm and one bead on another and no beads on the third. How are you going to, Right. you know, it's going to be yeah. very challenging. It, it becomes a puzzle. Okay. And that was, that was the one thing that I was thinking could just. Blow the other it out thing of the is water. it limits how you're going to place it because, you know, there's about 12 different ways that you can place that and get a water level out of it. And you can put it in the middle of a class and everybody in a 360 degree circle can see the water level based on whatever arm is convenient for them to look at. Yep. Yeah, yep. So that was how it was designed. Yep. Yeah, good point. Excellent. And by the way, uh, I did start up my Patreon. And if you sign up for the team technology, which is the $20 a month level, which is you know, my number one level, I'm going to send you one of those things for free. Woohoo. Woo. -hoo. Uh, Peter. Yeah, spend yeah, hundred and spend two hundred and forty yeah, dollars a I'll month, do and I'll send you a fifteen dollar piece of shit. <laughs> that, hey, it's the way PBS does it. That's Peter, right. Can you can, yeah, can you I'll, let, I'll, can you let them, in them in and then um, um, he's in he's uh, in and I'm swapping over now, Alan. Okay, thank you. All right, I got to run for a few minutes. I'll kind of stay in the background. I'll be back. All right. Actually, I was going to say before the. Um, the closer you get to the truth, the harder they fight. So yeah. Yeah. if you are start, if you start talking about moon bounds, uh, or you start talking about anything that really disproves flat earth, like going up to the Kármán line, they, yeah, it's immediately jumped on. I've noticed that. The closer you get, the worse it gets for them, and the harder they fight to keep it. You know, the, um, the I think, I, think, um, <clears throat> I was going to say that, one of the main reasons why um, I've become involved in the in this uh, this community is uh, Anthony Riley. Um, mm -hmm. 
it's it, it's well, it's not the first time I've ever spoken to him, but um, it's uh, it, I find him kind of um, repulsive and fascinating at the same time. <laughs> um, like Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Jabba the Hutt's a bit more intelligible, um, but uh, the um, it, it's it's very very uh, strange to me the the way that he the way that he behaves. Um, uh, I mean, well, it's the whole it's the whole ethos of of, um, of the flat earth, I suppose, is that that uh, and 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 any any conspiracy theory that you that you choose um, is where the core belief itself um, is more important than anything else. Um, right. And and when when uh, evidence is provided that should at the very least cause a person to to question their belief or even completely overturn it it doesn't actually make any difference and that's the, that's the antithesis of, of uh, scientific inquiry um uh, and it, it's well the, it, yeah. the, the 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 biggest issue for me as far as i can tell is or as far as i can see it is the Flat Earth idea is a scientific claim, hmm. and it's an interesting one because no Flat Earther that I've encountered so far discovered this Flat Earth idea through scientific inquiry or, or investigation. 100% of the people got it from YouTube or another online source or someone said something to them and it tricked you know all that and 100 percent of them were already into conspiracies before and are yeah. predisposed to be into uh, to believe in conspiracies so when you when you say and this is why it's difficult to argue the evidence because it is a belief it's not it's not um it's not a it's not a belief if you will that you've drawn you've arrived at through scientific pro, the scientific process it's a belief that you've arrived at through watching videos and so when you try to say to somebody, you know, we have evidence that the earth isn't flat, essentially what they, they do is appeal to YouTube videos where they've seen um, footage uh, taken from the International Space Station where people in the flat earth are, are saying that it's all fake because there are harnesses. No harnesses visible, no wires visible, no CGI proven, and yet they still believe that it's all fake and phony. Did they, you know, were they part of the team that produced, you know, you know, are there a whistleblower that's part of the team that produces CGI? Were any of them uh, experts in photography or videography that can prove the photographs are demonstrably fake? No, none of them. None of them uh, yes. have uh, any such qualifications. Yeah, it, it's weird. It, it is pretty weird. I mean, the, the, um, the, the, a few years ago, I, I sort of developed a bit of a fascination with the, with the psychology of... Uh, conspiracy theories there's a, there's a book that uh, I've been trying to get my hands on for a while but I keep forgetting what it's called but it was a, a guy that um, he basically spent about 18 months researching lots of different mm. uh, conspiracy theories with, with, you know like Holocaust denial um, mm. uh, you know all, all sorts of uh, all sorts of stuff and and sort of drew it all together um, and examined the psychology, the psychology of, of people who, who believe in the, this kind of stuff but um, but yeah, the uh, the Apollo the Apollo hoax was uh, was the first thing that I I uh, kind of re researched. Uh, I was off off work with a broken ankle um, and was bored, and it was it coincided with the the uh, anniversary of like the first American in orbit or something. Right. And um, I I <laughs> I was reading about it on uh, on some online news. Um, website and underneath there was all these comments of NASA lies and uh, you know look, check out this website it's amazing and I did check out the, the websites that in, in uh, that were in favor of yeah. you know the Apollo hoax and I was just like really is this is this uh, is, is this this is the smoking gun of, of proof uh, for for Apollo being hoax and every every single um, you know, piece of of so-called evidence that was provided would you know could be explained within a couple of seconds, uh, and and was all just just it, yeah. just it makes you feel embarrassed for the rest of the human race. Yeah. 
Um, it is embarrassing, yeah, for someone to be to be so certain of something that is just completely false. There's a lot of on, lies uh, as well. A lot on, of on my channel, I have uh, <clears throat> a number of playlists. One of them being psychology, and mm. some of those psychological videos are definitely worth checking out to understand better the the conspiracy mindset. Yeah, yeah. but it's. I think. I, th I think one I of these just. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. Right. Can you know, guys? I was just going to say that the um, one of the one of the problems with this mindset is that they're so sure that um, they're being lied to that it becomes like a fair tactic in in the war, like um, and uh, and you know with this assumption that they're being lied to as if it's a strategy that that, that we employ they're so certain that we that we're lying that they think it's okay for them to kind of tell kind of half truths and lies and and distort uh distort information to suit their own narrative you know um and and flatly deny that they're they're doing it no pun intended they, um, they, they talk about presuppositions and that's exactly what they do they have presupposed that basically everything they've been told is a lie and work from there yeah um and and so and also there's a it's a classic it's a quite really uh, um, abusive uh, um, thing to do as well is is to is to accuse others of your own behaviour. Um, and I, I just couldn't help but it's called uh, hypocrisy. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is, but but it's but you know, Spurs Kimo um, accusing. Uh, Globe Earthers of dishonesty and derailing the conversation is just that's a bit rich. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, about if I may interrupt. Um, yeah, uh, I think uh, Tony Lyle did that to me on uh, House's show, uh, number one hundred and forty. He just built a straw man about the way I wrote things. And we had a discussion for about an hour explaining to him that, you know, there is an acceleration in a zero G plane. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, I think with Anthony, with his um, his his uh, gravity is not a force um, uh, narrative. That that was the that was probably the main reason why I, I took such an interest. Um, but he he will not be. Um, there's no talking to him. Uh, uh, you know, again, it's it's this this. Uh, if you you know if you can't if you can't have a discussion with somebody and. For them, you know, to, to have them actually consider what you're what you're actually saying, um, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, and the the only hope left is that people might be listening to it. That you know, and and to them, it's exposed. There, what, there what is this, If I may interrupt again, yeah, sorry true. about that. No, um, no. There's one more thing about zero G plane going down. Yeah, you are flying about yeah but there are people who are flying forward of the plane and there are people who are flying backwards of the plane mm -hmm. should they not be you know if it's only about because zero g planes are uh, just denying gravity they just uh fall uh with the same rate as people do that are held inside them. Well, they're falling at the same rate that yeah, exactly. the acceleration because... of gravity. So you basically negate gravity. Yeah. So if there is no gravity in there, uh, why are they not falling? Because um, flat IFS are saying that uh, if... Uh, well, there is no gravity. There is only density and buoyancy. Yeah. So yeah. why don't the people on the zero G plane hit the front of the plane when it's going down? Ah, well, that's 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 where their um where their core beliefs 
pull down because and I think they are modifying it now. I think they, they, they're tending to steer a little bit away from buoyancy because as we all know, buoyancy only works because of gravity. So you can't say there's no such thing as gravity, it's density and buoyancy, unless you, yeah, exactly. unless you redefine what you want buoyancy to mean and not what the rest of the world takes it to be. But uh, uh, that's, yes. this, this whole thing, I mean, they're not really flat earthers. They are globe deniers. Um, and Riley is is a spectacular example of that. You know, he's asked me before, well, explain how tides work without the moon. I said, well, why should I? We know why tides work. It's the gravitational, <laughs> mainly it's the gravitational effect of the moon. It's up to you to explain how they work without, without the moon's influence. And I can guarantee if you ask him that, he'll disappear. He'll go silent. That's funny good. enough, funny enough, I'll, I'll just really quick. Um, Alan's actually got a um, a audio snippet of our mate Riley being asked. Excuse to me, you. excuse me, just uh, one one sentence. Um, he disappeared on me yeah. Yeah. Yes, after does. asking the question about uh, the zero G plane. He disappeared. Yeah. Sorry. So, thank you. Not, uh, which, not a which, problem, Adam. I was, yes, I do, I'll just, don't I? I was just going to say really quickly, Alan's got a lovely audio snip of our friend Riley talking about a um, siphon and how a siphon would work um, instead of using gravity, using density and buoyancy. And his Freudian slip just so happened to come out with, well, it wouldn't, it, the density needs gravity to work. <laughs> yeah, Would we like it. to hear it? Yes, please. Describe the, and sorry, this is from uh, Craze uh, Crazations, Crazations with a Z. Uh, describe how a siphon works using density and buoyancy instead of gravity. It's just pressure is equilibrium. Sorry, um, what was it using instead of gravity? Describe how a siphon works using density and buoyancy instead of gravity. Well, you can't use density and buoyancy um, instead of gravity because buoyancy is dependent on gravity. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Right. So, so there's Oops. all the proof that I needed that he's nothing but a po. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Nobody with his level of education can be that thick. Really can't be. Right. So there's this so there's something going on. What is going on? That's what I want to know. So I, I really feel that I mean, I I'm I'm not the, the world's best uh, communicator by any means, but I, I I don't think there was anything particularly difficult to understand about what I was saying to him uh, earlier on. Um and it, it, he I mean, you got very, you got very, very agitated as, as he does, um, and started uh, calling me names and what have you. I but, think that he's found himself a nice little position within this, this, this whole select group of people who are obviously more woke than the rest of us. And I think that's what a lot of it comes down to. That they are, they're part of this, this very select community who are, who are more awake to the world around us than we allegedly are. And he is now playing a pivotal role in that community. And I don't think you'll ever get him to stop that because prior to that, what, what has he had? Uh, you know, he's, he's tried to be a lawyer. That didn't work. He obviously couldn't. He obviously didn't like the hard work that entailed starting at the bottom. So he went from being a lawyer to um, running a minicab business. We all know what happened to the first one of them. Alan, can you let the let, um, crash in? He's in. He's in. Is Sorry, it? I. Uh, <laughs> I, can I, see, I can see his beard and everything. <laughs> I occasionally have people oh. distract me at this end. Um, <laughs> yes, I bet you do. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, I, was, I was I was reading the YouTube comments. It's, Sorry. Especially especially when they've just walked in from being out all day. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 Riley, We know Riley's not in it for the money. Because his channel isn't monetized. 
So what is he in it for? He's he's in it yeah, for the, but, the the adulation, but, the, the the fame, the everybody thinking he's bloody wonderful, you know. But he is a, in he is in it for the money because who paid for him to do his law degree? Patreon uh, conferences. He's got a number of ways he's raising money. He he's just doesn't for the money. He he doesn't get it from um, YouTube because uh, YouTube decided to remove his PayPal account, and YouTube decided not to let his channel be monetized. That's all it is. Ah. Uh, so don't be fooled. I finally in. I didn't realize it. I was eating my lunch. It, yeah, you, yeah, YouTube has no control over PayPal. They can't remove his, a PayPal account. No, but YouTube can make a complaint that they think that the finances that are going into it from their channel may be fraudulent. The, um, which, is, which has happened to a few of them now. Yes, that's true. You know, I, I said to um, I said to Bob the Bob the science guy um, a while ago that Anthony really reminds me of. Um, of of uh, the defence lawyer um, of a of a person who clearly is guilty of murder. Um, he he he, uh, he said, "Well, the you know the, the lawyer the lawyer is doing the job, and uh, everyone's entitled to their defence." I'm like, "Well, yeah, sure." But what I meant was somebody who knows full well what they're saying uh, isn't true, mm. and they just keep going. Um, and and uh, I I just can't uh, I can't abide that I can't um, again it's the the antithesis of, of uh, genuine scientific endeavour um, you know to you really you must know that that uh, what he's saying isn't isn't true but it doesn't matter he just keeps he just keeps going yes I don't think um, the truth really matters at all to him does it. Um, when I, I said to him once, um, personally, that you you know you you're, you're trying to say that that um, we can discount our current understanding of gravity um, because Einstein, uh, you know, in Einsteinian physics, um, gravity isn't isn't uh, described as a force. Mm -hmm. Yet, uh, if we do describe gravity as a force on on Earth. Uh, we can, you know, terrestrially, um, certainly we can continue to think of gravity as a force and, uh, and it works yep. in every circumstance on Earth. Yep. Um, and this didn't make any difference to, to, uh, to his narrative during that conversation at all. He just kept going. I'm a bit, I, just tried to, I tried to pin him down and said, but what, do you, what have you got to say about that? That if, if we do consider gravity as a force, um, it works. Engineers use it to build bridges and, and um, you know, all, all sorts of things every day. Yeah. And it didn't make yeah. any difference. Put satellites into orbit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, I would be, if I was him and somebody said something of that gravity, see what I did there, um, I, I would, I, I wouldn't, I don't know how I would continue, <laughs> you know, um, and he just keeps going. So, yeah, he's also got so far into it, there's absolutely no way now that he can do an about face, is there? You know, he's been so insistent for so long that he can't change his tune. Yeah. I, I don't, and, and Spurs as well, I, I don't believe for a second that he that he believes that the Earth is this but No. Not at all. No, he's just trolling. Yeah. Um, and it's... Uh, Ugh, yeah. They love the attention, and and particularly Spurs. You know, we we said nineteen hangouts. Oh God, you know, don't let Spurs in. If Spurs comes in, ignore him. But that never happens. As soon as Spurs comes in, wallop, off we go. That's all he wants. Yeah, well, the the um the point that I was trying to make to him that he was he was dodging um was that you know Toddy UK tried to lead him by the nose through through a you know a. a Sort of generalization of the scientific method. Um, when it was last week, or it wasn't. It wasn't long ago. Mm. And uh, he just he was wriggling and wriggling, and just just completely derailing the conversation at every single uh, possible point. 
That's what um, he does. That's yeah, what, and he's because he's got he's because he's got nothing, and that's why you never get a straight answer out of him. You'll yeah. never, I've I've never heard a straight answer out of him yet. Yeah. Um, and it's um it's pretty galling for for someone like him to you know to try and to try and uh, kind of take me to task about anything to do with uh, to do with science and to, for you know he's demanding of me uh, you, you know my what's my what's my explanation of how to conduct an experiment and stuff I'm like for fuck's sake <laughs> <laughs> well it depends what you're doing <laughs> well, yeah. well gentlemen I think I need to call you all to order. As we must now start the um, conversation between they and them and um, multi tom tom. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, gracious. Going you thought, speed. <clears throat> well, yeah. You, th- yeah. you thought you heard, you heard swearing uh, and uh, <laughs> loud voices before? <laughs> Pretty sure so. Get out, get get out your raincoats. I've listened to Martin Tom Tom in, in, in one or two discussions. He's actually joined in. He's just a keyboard warrior. And it's um it's interesting. Yeah, we, we do have a we do have an issue with it though. We have no multi Tom Tom. Well, I was gonna say, where is he? He he, <laughs> he hasn't shock. arrived. He ha- he ha- shockingly he hasn't arrived. <laughs> Beach um, made. <coughs> And uh, he's not even he's not in the side he's not in the YouTube chat and he hasn't arrived and I'm pretty sure he knows which YouTube channel it's on and yep. what time especially since it's only 24 hours since we um, set the whole thing up. In fact, it's less than 24 hours since we set the whole thing up. Well, maybe maybe um, he's the first and he's completely recent. I'll be I'll be the pole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can do it. I'll I'll yeah. do your research, Jules. Jules, no, I've I've got all my research. Uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> No 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 no. That, that was my it, second it, line. No reason. <laughs> uh, because I don't understand. Uh, I'd uh, uh, I'd like to. I I I think that me and Shell should team up. I I want to shout um shout at Globetards. I've never done it before. <laughs> you guys are retarded. <laughs> no, I've not got no, I, I, Honestly, I, I have to disagree there. I think uh, a lot of flat earthers are actually intelligent people, run of the mill, average folks. I think they've just been horn swoggled into thinking it's a bullshit. Horn swoggled. Horn swoggled. I like that. That's, That's a, a great good. name for a Tuesday afternoon. Uh, the problem with John point flat earther is he doesn't sound convincing with at all you're roboting really bad i could yeah, um i could put on a put on an accent well if you're going to um, be multi tom tom it's got to have a certain um subcontinent accent to it subcontinent if you know what i mean <laughs> Because that's, the, always, that's mm, the accent he's got. I, I could always uh, rip off my T-shirt and say that I'm Scotty Storm. <laughs> uh, yeah, John, I'm, a, I'm afraid I have to agree with Crash. You just don't sound like a convincing flirt. You're just a bunch of fucking globe tarts. That's better. I fucking had enough. <laughs> um, yeah, you're going to rage quit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You're, you're. You're. Now you're. Now you're channeling. Now you're channeling. <laughs> yeah. I'm such a fan of having a civilized conversation. I don't. I don't think I could really pull off a convincing impression for very long. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, but somebody was saying about you know the um, the, the the average FEA being generally. But okay, it's not a, yesterday evening, you know, the, the conversation just evolved into general chit chat, and that was fine. And it was great, and there were still quite a lot of people watching, so we kept it on going. Um, but let's see, Montreal came into this, came into the chat, 
and we were discussing all sorts of stuff when he came in and he was quite happy to join us in that conversation and I thought it was a really nice interesting chat we had by not talking about the flat earth <laughs> yeah and just and just chewing the just chewing the fat like people do like you know like when you have to sit down at somebody else's table in a coffee bar and you speak to them or, or sitting at the bar in the pub in the, in the evening when you're there on your own and you just speak to the person next to you it was that sort of conversation and it was quite enjoyable and he showed himself to be um a reasonably smart guy um He's 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 um, showing something else in the side chat there. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> yeah, but I think that's because it's the conversation in the side chat is that conversation that um, sparks everybody at the, in this community yeah. because he's it, got an audience. It has an audience, and it's the polarizing conversation. And yeah, that's what we expect. And I, I admit that that's what most people come here for to catch the polarizing conversation. Um, I'm just saying. Yeah, if, that you, if you. Sorry. That's if you go ahead. to um, Simon, Simon Dan's videos and look at the view counts of the ones where he's talking about actual science and the one where he's talking about flat earth, the flat earth ones get far, far many, far more clicks and views and comments because people yeah. are interested in the the fun you know the debate yes it's not that we know everything about science i don't know everything about science but um in a lot of respects it's more entertaining to uh, to talk about flat earth and with flat earthers and listen to all the, the silly things than it is to uh study more about the moon you know Anyway, yeah, people here just, I think people are just into it just because it's, uh, it's just daft. They, they and are. the level of daftness. They, They're here uh, for the It's long. a long time since, a, yeah, it's, it's been a long time since I've heard daftness as daft as that earth. Well, yeah, quite. I mean, it, 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 it takes it to the extreme, doesn't it? It is just, I mean, when I, when I sort of first heard about it on YouTube and watched a couple of videos, it was just jaw-droppingly, you know, no, come on! This 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 is the twenty first century. How you can't can people be still think this, you know, in in the yeah, light of everything serious. that's put before us. It's just like <laughs> no, it can't be. Of course, it is. Yeah, yeah, you can't. That's why so many people are accusing um, of them of being posed. I I've got that opinion about one of them, uh, but I am even doubting that one. I think he is serious. So when people say, I don't think Riley believes this, I don't think Oakley believes this, I don't, because it's just, it's so difficult to believe that people can be that certain about something that's so demonstrably false. Yeah. And so we end up thinking they can't be serious. They must be a Poe or they must be, you know, has something wrong with them. And so depending on who you talk to is depending on which viewpoint you get. So many people are just calling Spurs a Poe, and Oakley a Poe. And no, I think they really do believe it. Riley does believe the earth is flat. I don't. I can't imagine anyone putting that much effort into it if they didn't really believe, like Mark Sargent. He is just really that far gone that even appearing in an ad in Australia that hmm. mocks him yeah. is, is, is fine. And you know how I know that? Because I was in his hangout and he was talking about the ad and they are saying it's a win for Flat Earth because people get to hear Flat Earth, regardless of whether they're mocked for it or not. It's just getting the word out. They don't care. It's the ultimate troll. If you troll me, good. If you mock me, good. Because you're still saying Flat Earth. You're still paying attention. Well, it, as Oscar, it, as Oscar Wilde respect. once once famously said, the only thing worse than oh, yeah. being talked about is not being talked about. Not, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> you might just say anything it's like a streaming piece about, <laughs> not being talked about yes <laughs> you might just say it's like a big jam donut with cream on the top what? what? 
We just want a business. <laughs> exactly. I'm glad somebody else remembers all that. <laughs> yes, of course. But it, it's, your majesty yeah, is like it, a dose of clap. <laughs> it, it's the old. There's no such thing as bad publicity. You know. That's it. it, it it's it's the, yep. the, the, the the whole flat earth thing. The whole name is 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 out there, and the small people are talking about it. You know, and and particularly in, in that exact case. I don't think he really cares how much Rick Pratty looks because how much did he get paid for it? You know, yeah, here's a large weight of cash to make yourself look a clown for 30 seconds. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Lots of people have done that. Lots of people have been in ads that make them look silly. Hello, I have a phone call and I'll be back. Okay, that's Pink Floyd. <laughs> Pink Floyd. Time. Hello. Hello. Exactly. Oh, my, one of my brothers, I was in the car and I was driving to Texas. Both my brothers oh, were there. Was... And, um, and they said, here, name this tune. And they played one second of it. It was a single tone. And I went, uh, metal by Pink Floyd. <laughs> and they went, dang it. <laughs> well, see, I, I always struggled to find a ringtone that nobody else has got. There you and go. I, I, and I, just, I just love, as, as they used to call it, the bells of doom, the opening to time with all of the clocks and the bells and everything. So I sort of used a little bit of software to snip it down to that. Unfortunately, I listen to Planet Rock on the, on the digital radio all day. And every mm. now and then they'll play time and you'll hear that go off and I'm going, where's my phone? <laughs> I'm looking for my phone. <laughs> it does oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Vegan realist. Have you heard of him? He's formerly Jamie Brown. And he's online right now doing a live stream. Very interesting. He has this, it doesn't look like he's cut his hair in three years. Ooh. It does look, if he was in a rock band, it'd be a cool look. <laughs> he looks a bit like um, Frank Zappa. Ah, oh yes. Yes, I know that. What's, what's he called? Vegan Vegan realist. He used to be Jamie Brown. He used to be a flat earther. He's he's still into conspiracy ideas, but he's not a flat earther anymore. Uh, he's very he's got a, he's got a very thick regional accent. Talks slowly, but he does think about stuff. Yeah. I initially, sort of thought, oh, I don't know if I can listen to this, but he actually does think about stuff. Oh yes, he has got a bit of a, a, a Frank Zappa going on, hasn't he? Sort of, doesn't he? Yeah. Just I've got so many windows Listen, open. Looks a bloody mess, though. <laughs> he doesn't do Frank Zappa as well as Ali B. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Ali B. Use guys. Use. Use. <clears throat> Use guys. Use guys. <laughs> no. 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 Oh, I can't, no. I can't have you. I can't have you slagging off my fellow Scotsman. Oh. No. I'll come down there with my virtual claymore. Dune. Oh, sorry, is, is it your job? <laughs> no. 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 Oh, dear. No. That's like being down on the farm. Was it milking time? No. <laughs> no. It's just so much fun. I'm just, I don't know, I'm just being stupid today. Just being silly is here. Every day. Just being silly, my boy. The blue meanies. I've got, uh, for a ringtone, I've got Queen's Don't Stop Me Now. Don't stop me now. I, I noticed you that, I have have a now. that they've just had half a million downloads of Don't Stop Me Now on YouTube. <laughs> Where are I? Oh. Oh, yeah. um, there was a local, right. there was a um, local town uh, here, and they have a nice park, and they do these events. They have arts festivals and all sorts of other things, and they had this festival thing, and there were some rock bands there, and they were, mm. and then they stopped it all, and then they, the guy comes on and he says, "We've got the headlining group right now, and it's Queen Nation or something like that. It's Queen Tribute Band. Oh, they were amazing." I was just, I stood there for 45 minutes, just um, the, the, the quality of the music it was just like listening to the record. It was yeah. so good. So good. And every, I mean, it was kids listening, kids singing along. Um, 
middle-aged people sing along, older people sing along. It was brilliant. And I can't think of many other bands that has that much of a, a connection with different um, age groups. Well, yeah. I know one of the, I know one of the records that Queen have is that uh, they are the only band. I'm not sure if it's a top ten or a number one hit written by every band member. There you go. Yeah, yeah. We've talked including, about this before, haven't we? including mm. the percussionist. Yeah, including the drummer. Yeah. Well, I think that would be. Uh, I think that was news of the world, if I remember right. News of the world. Apparently, the drummer is the one that hit the high notes either live yes. or on records. Yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, Taylor. Or Taylor. excuse me, De Deacon. I'm sorry. De that's right. Deacon. That's right. Or wait a minute. Deacon, Deacon was no. the bassist. Oh, gosh. I'll have to look up the names. Brian May. Yes. John Deacon. Brian May. John Deacon. Uh, Roger Taylor. Roger, Roger Taylor. Taylor. Thank you. But yeah, the drummer. The drummer was, was the one that could hit the really high falsetto notes. Yeah. Uh, he, was, he was the only one that could outstrip Freddie's range in either direction. Mm. You know what they used to do when they did Bohemian Rhapsody live is they would actually, they um, when they came to that segment, they yeah, would play, yeah, they would play the segment from the uh, music video, and then for me, for me, doom, bow, 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 that one, when they came back in, that's when the band came back in. Uh, yep. But they, yeah, so they didn't do that live. Now uh, the the opening of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, when you've got the got the group singing in harmony at the beginning, yeah, it's just Freddie. Yeah, it's all Freddie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five of them. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah, some of those a few some of those high notes you, you you can't keep doing them over time. I mean, Deep Purple when they used to do Child in Time, um, I, well he can't do that anymore. He can't do Child in no. Time. It's, yeah, Ian, Ian Gillen yeah. can't get those. No. Getty is the other one. Getty couldn't hit the, uh, when they were doing 2112 Live on yeah. R40 or R30, he couldn't, there's no way he could get up that high. He's in his 60s. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm well, well okay. That's not, that's not entirely true. That's not entirely true or rather entirely out of, out of um, the realm of reason because if you, uh, if you know anything about any operas, um, opera singers, you know, could get hit those notes into their 60s because they trained every single day. <laughs> yes. And it's Taylor, Taylor on the drums. Kinda. Yeah, Roger Taylor. Yeah. I, sh I shouldn't I have doubted myself, but. Yep, Roger Taylor. <laughs> I, I am John, glad John I Deacon saw, and Roger Taylor. I am glad I saw Rush on the Moving Pictures tour in 82, yes. I think it was, at um, Me too. Wembley Arena. I remember, ah, friend, I we, saw... got, we got, we ended up with tickets. We were we were in the banks of seats that ran down the sides of the auditorium and we were in the top row right at the very far end of the auditorium and they were like well you really we really could have done with binoculars to be able to actually see the stage yeah. but we were there yeah you got you got the atmosphere we, and the flavor of it oh yeah we saw i mean them. seeing them live was brilliant yeah we saw them on that tour we saw them at the d side leisure center which is in Cheshire. Yeah. And, uh, was Getty called it D side leisure center. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was it. I thought that was brilliant. I never forgot that way you pronounce that. It's the first time I'd heard American or anyone <laughs> transatlantic person say leisure. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> so you ever heard of, you ever heard a Texan say theater? Theater. Oh theater. The theater. Yeah, theater. Yeah, heavy on the eight. Alan, Tom, Tom is in the ch in the side chat. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> and the choir did say. Well, there's what Tom, Tom. There you go. There's the link. Hello. I just posted it for you. And there was much rejoicing. <laughs> okay. Oh gosh. Is that the same? Is is that when where they were forced to eat Sir Robin's minstrels? Yes. Yes. And there was... Yeah. Oh, dear, dear. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, no, that well, you guys are certainly a lively bunch. Not this point. <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike. Can I heal? Someone can needs heal? to disagree Hello? with me. Alan, you need to let Crash back in. I've let him back in. I've let everybody back in. in. Let Mr. Crash Bandicoot in. back in. Crash I'm letting everybody in. I'm keeping a, I'm keeping a very close eye on the list at the moment to make sure Crash that I can... Yeah, that's what confused um, me. I think, I think he fell out <laughs> and came back in. And, um, he was still in. We were waiting for you to show up, Baloo. I'm Who's here. The, phant the phantom. Yay, panic over. Mm -hmm. wow, there's a lot of people in here. Oh, and not everyone's over talking. How oh, cool. <gasps> I'm just working on the website, man. I'm... Uh, got a page together for all the equipment in the studio I'm kind of working on now. Alan, multi Tom Tom has requested that the non-participants leave the leave the Zoom. Mm. Yeah, I will not comply. Uh, I'll let you all back in mm. after the, the conversation. That's not a problem. Uh, I was I was waiting for him to join and then I was going to ask him if he was happy for you to be on mute or if he wanted you to all leave. Um, I got here. I'm just, <laughs> yeah, just I'm going. sorry. <laughs> um, I got here at the right time, just in time to get kicked out. You know, do we, I mean, are we, are we really going to have someone dictate that sort of thing? I'm just saying. Uh, I, would, I would, I would like to, I would at least like to see Morty Tom Tom enter the chat. At which point if I, I will ask. Him, get, at if which I point I will ask shredded, everybody then, to leave. Yeah. If he wants a one-on-one. -on -one, oh, no, when Tom Tom gets in here, I'll be gone. That's just a little bit controlling. Yeah. Because oh. because I don't happen. He'll ask they everybody the to leave they and still not come in. They 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 need the attention. So he needs the attention. Give him the attention. Yeah. Tom Tom, you have my word. The moment you enter this room, I will leave. Sorry, guys, I forgot uh, I was also here. Oh, and you you can't hear me anyway. <laughs> we hear you, Laurie. As long oh, as you want me. As long as, I was as, long as you want that... yourself. I'm so used to not being heard because I've had every time I, I have joined joined Zoom so far, uh, I haven't been heard. The first time, so I had have had to drop out and then reach on. I didn't do it this time, so it's a wonder that I'm hurt. <laughs> but I can actually drop out if that's necessary. Yeah, well, uh, when once Tom Tom's in the meeting, um, really, if you have a yeah. happily, yeah. Alan, I'm just on mute. I'm not really doing anything. I'm just kind of listening. I'm working on something else. Yeah, I. Uh, I promise that if he wants to come in and you know is afraid uh, somebody will will challenge him or something, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to bother with it unless you ask me to. Yes, yes, Mark Tom Tom, you will get a one-on-one -on -one with that and them. You will not be interrupted. And I was going to ask everybody to leave. However, um, we'd like to actually see you in the chat first, yeah. please. Is my microphone more? Uh, no, He's you're calling us roboting us. quite badly, Ali. So we're vultures, etc. Right. Uh -huh. Aha. I don't know if this is even <laughs> worth it. <laughs> Like a dim view of anybody who actually writes ha 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 in the song. I heard, I'm sure I heard yeah. Ali, Ali's upper there. Ali. Who on earth is Captain Smegma? Yeah, Ali, <laughs> Ali was here. Um, Ali. That's me. I'm. <laughs> Make it. <laughs> ah, come out to play. <laughs> it's more coming first than you 
Oh, yes. Come in. Come in, Tom. He's, he's Marty Tom Tom. Come. come into the. Come into the voice Ali. chat. Join the. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> that is just too <laughs> creepy. You got to bang some, some. Uh, Hello. Glass bottles together. <laughs> I don't know what happened to Ali. I think he, as I say, I think he dropped out because he was, he was roboting very badly. We have an eternity to know your flesh. Ali. <laughs> Stop it. Adam, behave. All right. <laughs> don't, don't think, don't think I won't kick people out. I will. I have done. Yeah. Oh, he yeah, rules it's, with an it, iron fist. It's, it's like, don't think if it comes down to it, I won't mute. Yeah, yeah, I, if it comes down to it, I mute people and I don't care who they are or which side of the fence they're on. If they're not behaving properly, I will mute them. If they're not, if they carry on not behaving properly, I will boot them. <laughs> it's not a big, it's, it's not a big problem. He's on. That's why we switched to Zoom. So we have, so he has the mute and boot ability. Yep. Yeah. Mute and boot. And yeah. Mute and boot. People will leave when um, when Tom Tom comes on, <laughs> and if they don't leave, I will boot them. Join Sorry. Us. Come over to the dark side. We have cake. <laughs> oh, that's why the dark side's so popular, is it? They've got all the cake. Yep, the dark side's got cake. <laughs> oh, don't be afraid. We don't buy it. Unless you want us to. The dark <laughs> side also has bacon. <laughs> bacon, bacon and cake. Bacon. Actually, um... we have real bacon, not that fake bacon. Uh, don't start all that old shit again. <laughs> the, um, the 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 veterans group that I go to on a Thursday, um, we have a we have a we have an ex member of the Royal Catering Corps, oh. also known as also known as a slop jockey. Yeah. But he makes slop jockey. Ba yes. He makes no. bacon. He makes bacon for bacon rolls for us all in the in the mornings. But his speciality as a chef, cakes and pastries. And he loves to make cakes and pastries, and he is very, very good at it. So we have cake too, oh. homemade cake. Oh, oh easy peasy. I'm a whiz. Yeah. Look, he won't, he won't right. come in whilst we're here. Just, just to make it clear, multi Tom Tom, if you join the Zoom app, I will I will ask Alan. To kindly kick anybody who doesn't leave voluntarily, so that you and I can have a one-on-one -on -one chat, Eesh. so that you can educate me. So come on, right. big boy I've pants already, in on and jump in. I've already told him that there and then. I know, but I, I figured mm. that, uh, he'd use it against me if I didn't say it as well. Yeah. Because I know what it is. He just wants everybody to drop from the call so that he can then muck us around uh, completely. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, what he's going to do, he was going to leave. Uh... And then for the next year, you're going to hear about how he was able to control you. Yeah. You thought I was going to come in? Ha, ha, ha. You fools are not ready for my secret super knowledge. <laughs> yeah, he's just going to stand out there and holler. He ain't coming in. Screw that. Yeah. Tom Tom, the easiest way to shut us all up is to just come into this damn room and have a chat while we all You'll leave. Yep. See, I made a mistake thinking he was actually going to do this, but he's just going to stand, you know, at a distance shouting. I will leave voluntarily. Gonna I'm be getting, a comment commando. I'm getting bored. So does this mean if he comes in here and we all leave, we can be keyboard warriors on YouTube, right? Yeah. We could walk the walk without talking the talk. 
I'm willing to uh, uh, tag Tom Tom up to the good old fashioned hashtag of bitch made. Yeah. Looking at why isn't it? I got a video to work on anyway. <laughs> what are you working on, Blue? Oh, uh, Travis pissed me off yesterday, so I thought I'd return the favor. Oh, go for it. I cannot wait for that after the conversation I had with Travis off air the other day. Just Travis? <laughs> uh, well, well, no, I mean, Ali B actually stood up for me with Travis, so there's that. Well, you must have been fucked up. <laughs> well, Tom Tom's calling us a bunch of idiots. <laughs> that coming from a coming from a craven little pussy, then, you know, oh, don't really? mean a whole lot. Mm. Can I be Agent Orange? <laughs> <laughs> agents for fuck's sake but no adults actually come on come on Tom Tom, Tom, Tom. I, I, I jumped out I, I am bored <laughs> good evening Ali how's your connection now Tom Tom I already jumped out waiting for your ass to get in here but you're you're just going to stand back in the distance being a combat commando, so why the hell should I leave? You're not going to come in. If you're going to come in, then I'll go. Mm, I've already proven that. Same here. Okay. okay. How, How many, many people, people in here think, think that the payoff is, is going to be worth, worth this build-up? Build up? No. no. Sure. no it's just like... Mm -hmm. Oh, I've been on panels with... I haven't had a good laugh at all today. It's like I've been on panels with multi Tom Tom speak. before. I've been on panels with multi Tom Tom before. It's it, you know, it's just a shouting match. Yep. He's a less articulate Spurskimo. I'd rather have a normal conversation with Ali or other people. Agents kill innocent people. Oh, we we're killers now, are we? Weird. Really. Hmm. So I anyway, went green as people. <laughs> Wait, he said what about us being killers? Uh, he, he says I'm, uh, I'm with. Sorry. Oh, I was I was just gonna say I'm I'm with Hannah Anderson. Uh, she says he should be kicked out from every chat for welching. Yeah. Yeah, he's a pussy. He's he's he's, he's he is as they used to say, all mouth and no trousers. Don't don't devalue the, don't devalue all, the all hat no cattle. Comparing Tom Tom to it. No, you've already shown that you're not going to join. Yeah. yeah, that's his game. He wants all of us to leave and just have Alan and they and them in here, and then he still won't show up. But it's a pain in the ass for all of us to rejoin. Mm. Fuck this. Yeah, it's just yeah, it's just a typical childish bullshit game. Hello, goddamn multi. You, come on, kid, grow up. Okay, uh, I will leave. Have fun, guys. All right, Adam. Uh, don't don't I leave know. on his account. It's not like he's gonna show up. Exactly. No, it's just the time you're giving him to hang on up. Nope, you're right about that. How's, how's my mic now? Testing. G. One, two. G, I Thank wasn't you. expecting this outcome. Pitch made. Well, you could have made it sound a bit more convincing. Uh, <laughs> he needs to grow a pair, then a spine to hang him from. <laughs> Is that the politically correct thing to say unpaid? I give a fuck what's uh, what's politically correct. <laughs> yeah, it gives a shit about that. <laughs> politically correct can gargle by big gray fuzzy balls. <laughs> yeah, I see. What was it from American Pie 3? Here's the thought. Grow a sack, fill it with some balls, then grow a dick and start fucking yourself. <laughs> unpaid you owe me people because I just spit Dr. Pepper all over it when it said when you said that shit. Mamma Mudog plays a banana patch. What? 
Yeah. Yeah. Come on yeah, now. Exactly. I didn't catch anything you said. We need okay, so we need some more inventive names. So far we've got a couple of good inventive names. Well, he seems to be enjoying this. I don't know why. He's not actually doing anything. No, he's just we, he playing us. He's yeah. playing it. That's, that's all he's doing. It's just a game to kill a hangout. Yeah. Uh, all right. Never oh, thanks, Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Airbus's uh, map there, Ken? What's going on with this map, Ken? Okay. Ken's all quiet. He's just throwing us that he's turning into a flurf. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, what's going on that. with this map? <laughs> no, I have plenty of voices. Explain yourself, please. Who is doing the voices? I like. I love voices. Guys, I'm going to need y'all to help me out. I'm lost. If anyone knows where, if anyone knows where I should go, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Oh. We're playing silly buggers with the names, are we? Right out. If if I Not may interrupt, Tom. if Not I may interrupt, if you're asking for directions, go west where the skies <laughs> of blue. Is that the Pet Shop Boys version? <laughs> <laughs> Multi Tom Tom, I don't stream on my channel. I don't create content. That's why Alan agreed to this yesterday. So put on your big boy pants, join, jump into the meeting, waiting room, and everybody will leave. If you can't do that within the next three minutes, you are officially bitch made yet again. Did you say the mating room? I will oh. leave the mating room. <laughs> There's a mating room. <laughs> what? I'm off. <laughs> I'm there, dude. If he, goes in, if he goes in the white room, Alan will know that he's in the white room. And then everyone... I will leave. We will leave. We've got integrity. <clears throat> we will leave. We said we would leave. And then we'll leave. Could, could I ask a question? Um, uh, the and them. The and them. Hey. Oh. Hello, oh, then, then. <laughs> Sorry? A question? <laughs> yeah, I've got a question for you. Okay. We're going to uh, start calling you Alibot Ali or RoboBee or something, because your mic is just terrible. All right. Yeah. We can still hear you, though, Ali. Just a bit crackly. That's right. I just had that. No. Steve, what I'll do is I'll speak, and if you don't understand what I'm saying, that's okay. So then, then, uh, what do you actually think that you're going to achieve by having a debate with someone about the flyer? Absolutely nothing, Ali, because I freely admit that everybody in this room has researched topics more than I have. i just like to ask people how the contradictions of flat earth work so I can have a better understanding. Right. So wouldn't that, would, um, I mean, if you want to have to talk to the guy, don't you think you would be a bit more pleasant with him? Uh, Ali, there's history and between me and Tom Tom now. So this goes back, <laughs> this goes back years. Um, like, because you and I have had yeah, conversations on John G's. 
because you will join yeah, and I know, you will I have know. a conversation. Right, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm it's been two minutes yet. Yeah. Go west <laughs> where the skies are blue. The, the point is, he won't even come halfway. If he came in, if he came into Thanks the side room, in the question. Yeah. The point is, he won't even come halfway. If he came in the side room, um, we would all leave. The side room's got nothing to do with this until Ellen lets him in. Well, you know, it, it doesn't matter. He won't even go halfway. He won't click the link. He won't even get in halfway. And show us that he's willing to at least do something and fuck him. Fuck him, Blue. No offense, Blue. Now he wants to. Now he wants gently to start streaming and talk to him. I, I'll tell you what, Tom. Tom, why don't you just piss off then? <laughs> That's some really bad hailstone damage on screen there. Cool. No shit. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been parked in Texas. Angry. Some are upset and blowing me. <laughs> some of them Alaska mosquitoes have been on that. <laughs> Someone said wasp and angry in the same sense. You know that 90% of the construction of wasp, fear, hate, anger, and then the last 10% is an ass dagger. <laughs> Those are definitely Florida. Could I, could, I, uh, could I ask the panel something whilst we had a moment of si a moment of silence there? Yeah, go for sure. it. Oh, good stuff. And it'd be good if I could get an answer off of everybody, actually. And the thing is, uh, the question uh, would be, what drives you to come on to the internet and... Uh, like call people idiots, <clears throat> laugh at them, ridicule them, uh, so I, every day almost, and um, yeah, that's the question. So it'd be great if all the uh, panel could answer. Just just what drives you to come here? And maybe I I said it a bit rough there. Actually, I was a bit. Uh, that was a bit horrible. I so say, what drives you actually to come here and ask a uh, flat earthers or, you know, interact with flat earthers and ask them uh, questions and call them idiots and stuff like that? That's Just wonder what, what, what brought you to the station, probably shorter. What brought you guys into this cocktail a group of people were having amongst themselves? Um, Ali, we can, that's, the, that's the third time you've asked that question. We could have answered it after the first time. I'm just bored. I have downtime sometimes and I come on. That's all. My, that's the entirety of why I do it. For me? Yeah, I can answer real I'm, quick. Uh, for, oh, go ahead, Jill. Okay, for me, it's a matter of, uh, you know, those people that have already made up their minds and decided that they believe that the earth is flat, I'm not going to change their minds. But those people are just starting to look into it. They're just starting to think, you know, hmm, maybe I'm here for them because I want to uh, share actual real information. I want to share um, proper information with these people so that they can make a decision based on reality rather than somebody just pumping them full of sunshine. Um, and since I'm retired and have really nothing else better to do in my life, Hey, why not? Well, my answer uh, is actually to educate myself as well. Um, I've, you know, a lot of stuff that, uh, that I've learned throughout the years, I've probably forgotten 90% of it. So it's more of an education for me. Um, as to the other point, I don't call people idiots because I'm a fucking moron. Uh, you know, I'll admit it freely, but I'm willing to learn along with anybody else 
And, uh, you know, if we can't come to a consensus, then we walk away from the argument. Mine's just like I came here just because I was tired of listening to everybody's few stuff that I know is wrong. I'm not a scientist or a physicist or nothing. I'm just a fucking auto mechanic. Uh, I've heard you talk about you're actually more than a, 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 a mechanic. You, you can't call yourself that. You're a bit of a savant. I've got a friend like you, actually, so I wouldn't down yourself so much. You know, don't, don't, just because you haven't got a, a fucking a PhD in fucking engineering, you'd probably wipe the floor with a lot of fucking engineers that have me. And, I, and I'd but, like to go on record, Ali. I, I'd like to go on record publicly saying you're a very pleasant fellow to talk to, as long as the subject's not flat Earth. Um, you know, aside from aside from the whole flat Earth thing, hell, I could sit, talk to you all day, buy you a couple beers, have you buy me a couple beers, having a lot of laughs. You're a great guy. But when you get on flat Earth, that's when we got to start disagreeing with each other. Yeah, but what is it? This is this is good. This actually, right? Because I, and I'm not fishing or gotches or anything like that. So what is it about the flat Earth that bugs the shit out of you guys? <laughs> I know because it's, it's, it, uh, it's so obviously fucking wrong. Right, Ali, can I ask you a question? In response of course to you that, can. Right. It's the name of questions. Do, do you uh, <laughs> accept that science has gained enough knowledge to understand like things like a uh, nuclear energy production as a thing? Ah. You little fisherman, you. You little Irish fisherman. No, I believe in uh, atomic. I believe that the whatever they did, if they called it splitting of the atom, if Niels Bohr called it, or uh, Niels Bohr, if, if they called it splitting of the atom, they split the atom. But I believe uh, somehow they can, yeah. If, it, if it's an atom, it's an atom. But I, I do believe that uh, they've, uh, they've got that capability. Hey, just a by the by. Alan. There's a great video about a group of guys uh, that were involved in the in British people, British soldiers as well. There's not many left of them, right? Uh, they're all veterans, and they were actually there at the testing of the nuclear weapons, right? And what what's happened is every single one of the they're, they're trying to actually get money, they're actually trying to get compensation off the mm. government for uh, for actually uh, well. Every single one of them's died through cancer, a cancer thing, and they were in actual boats that watched these things go off because there was British, there was British sailors there as well uh, when they were watching it, and just them describing, right, just them describing what they saw, and uh, and uh, uh, the, what they talked about the heat, the whole phenomena of what they watched. I have to say. If they want to call it an atom bomb, they seen something that uh, certainly gives off radiation, and uh, science calls it, uh, you know, atomic physics. So I do believe, I do believe, I, d I don't personally believe in little uh, balls with things spinning around them as regarding atoms, but I believe they done something, and, and and it was radioactive, and it was a nuclear. If you want to call it a nuclear bomb, there's a nuclear bomb, man, and there's you know a atomic generators and stuff like that. All right, so Ali, yeah. I was in a Discord chat the other day, and some of the beliefs were that atomic energy was completely fake and that you could literally walk up to these things and be exposed to no danger at all. Well, there is a guy, there's a video of a guy, a guy that worked with them for years in the very, very, you know, the early days when they made the uranium pellets and stuff like that. Right? I can't remember his name. Uh, and and he, he's telling stories, you know, but, uh, when, they first, when it first came out, they were picking these little pellets up and stuff like that. He, he did say, though, you shouldn't, you shouldn't hold them uh, for uh, too long. You know, he did make that. It was quite funny. He said, you shouldn't hold them for too long, but they're... They're not as dangerous, he said. What happened was the uh, atomic or some agency from the government, right? Because they were doing all this kind of shit and playing about with it, and uh, and and it was quite safe. But maybe they did. 
it, it was quite safe, and the guy's still alive, so it was quite safe. But what he did say is then a government agency, I don't know who it was, that came up, uh, came around and decided uh, the you know that's too much, uh, that's too much exposure. That's that, and he decided uh, to make it a bit more. He says to make it a bit more scary sounding or something. He says, but it's not as harmful as they actually. Yeah, they actually are. I can't remember the guy's name, uh, but he's got videos on YouTube, uh, uh, YouTube where he gives lectures and stuff like that. Like an old guy, you know, he was there from the I beginning. Know you were talking uh, about Ali. Uh, do you know him? Yeah, I saw the video. All ah, right, he's got, he's got, yeah, oh, a nice one, Montreal. How are you doing? Uh, good, yeah, he, that's the guy who eats some of it, correct? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. He was he was saying that it was it was. I can't remember what uranium. Uh, what uranium? Two. I, 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 nah, I'd be lying if I did. But it was a uranium or whatever. And he was just saying it, it's not as uh, harmful as what they made it out to be. But yeah, I believe in nuclear weapons and stuff like that. You know, why not? Yeah, yeah. The the the, the thing about uranium is it's an alpha. It's an alpha emitter, so, and alpha particles can actually be stopped by the skin. So as long as you don't have them on your skin for a long time. Uh, oh, okay. And in, ingesting it is not good, but if you ingest a uranium pellet, it's, the pellet itself is going to pass through you very quickly. Yeah. So again, um, it's not going to do you any good, but it's probably not going to kill you. What's, what's going to kill you is breathing it in. Because it gets in your lungs and it, de- it will destroy your lungs. Ah, but, um, okay. But yeah, because uh, you, you, he's done it, Alex. Yeah, like it, vapor, it, would that be right? What? No. What kind happens of. is, as the as the uranium atoms decay into whatever their decay products are, uh, they give off alpha particles, and alpha particles are essentially protons. So. Is it a helium nuclear? Yeah, I, yes. it's positively charged and it's very, it's very big. So it's actually really, in an atomic sense, it's really big. So it's actually really easy to get for it to get stopped by stuff. So it gets it's stopped. You can stop it with, a, you can stop it with um, a sheet of paper. Okay, well, that's, I mean, that's interesting, Alan, because think of all, all the uh, fear porn based around uh, that radioactive radioactive stuff like that. That's quite interesting, but you're saying alpha particles. I'm going to look into that. Not for debunk, yeah. is because I, I'm genuinely yeah. interested in that kind of... The, the, difference, stuff, so. the difference between alpha, beta, and gamma is really important. Because alpha is really easy, but you can basically you can wash alpha off you. If you get stuff on it with alpha on it, you can wash it off you, and that'll be fine. Because unless it's literally in, well, unless it's inside you, it's really not going to do you a lot of harm. Yeah, you wouldn't want a lot of it on your skin because that would probably induce um, cancer, you know, skin cancers and the like. Um, you know. And, and um, long term, that's yeah. If you've got it on you for a long period of time, yeah, it's going to kill you. But you can wash it off. Um, All right. Beta, part- All right. beta particles are a bit more dangerous because that's got a little bit more range. Um, but again, you can stop beta particles with fairly thick clothing. A um, beta particle, sorry, Alan. Beta particles on a shorter wavelength are there? No, the no, no, wavelength they, they are alpha, alpha, and, alpha and beta are particles. Yeah. Um, ah, right. Oh, it's not a wave. Ah, right, right. Sorry, sorry, so, sorry. Yeah. So, right, okay. so they are literally particles. So they have to. They're very, they're very, very small because they're smaller than atoms. But they're, but they're still particles. They have to pass. So they're actually quite easy to stop. Um, a British uh, a, a British military MBC suit will stop alpha particles uh, and beta particles, oh. pretty much. So the gamma, the, the gamma, gamma right, is electric. Right, gamma, 
Gamma is the yeah, electromagnetic yeah. radiation. Gamma is the electromagnetic radiation. So that is the very, very high energy photons, uh, which are the same as light, radio waves, microwaves. They're all in that same. They're all in that same family. They all. It's just that the energy of a gamma photon is so high that it will, instead of just giving a bit of energy to a, to an atom when it hits it, it will literally hit the atom, atom and ionize it and and um, you know, do serious damage to it, especially yeah, if it like happens to be, no. an, especially if it happens to be an atom in your organic you know makeup. Um, so yeah, we what tend to worry like? about the stuff that we tend to worry about the stuff that creates gamma radiation the most. Um, so what do the particles they travel uh, like? As we've got gamma, that's on our electromagnetic wave. Yeah, what, so it travels, at the speed of light, it travels at the speed of light, just like just like all other light. Um, all the other things, all the other stuff that gives the other stuff, you actually have to have solid particles of things which then have nuclear break nuclear fission going on inside that break down and give off one of these particles so as long as you it's actually quite easy to protect yourself against it because you can wash it off you the these guys on the ships their problem would have been that when those bombs went off there would have been a metric shit ton of gamma photons coming out of it and those gamma photons would have come and they'd have ripped through their bodies and caused very serious damage to their bodies um, and of course it damages DNA and all sorts of th and all sorts of things and eventually yes you will it, it, you know, it dramatically increases your chances of getting various types of cancer as we have now discovered yeah, because that's oh, what I was saying. Uh, you should watch. Oh, sorry, sorry. On you go. Sorry, Ali. I just want to tell you guys, I just posted a video on what you're talking about, uh, Ali. The scientist's name is Gallen Windsor. It's a 10-minute video. You guys should watch this. You guys should watch this. He was one of the designers of uh, the, those uh, plants and everything. Yeah, he, he, he was from the 50, from the 40s or something, Montreal. It was quite funny I mean, listening to him talk. You know, yeah, yeah. It was, you got to see it this, Ali. I'm see. sure you saw it, but the rest of the guys, maybe you should play this video, Alan. I'm sure you won't get copyrighted. Uh, it's really uh, eye-opening. I, I got hit with one a, uh, a couple of days ago, so at the, at the minute I would prefer not to play anything I haven't checked first. Understood. Um, this it's guy, always yeah. good to be. In the, in the, you know where they store the uh, the, the uh, rods and stuff? He was swimming in there every night, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I like, don't think I would go that far. I mean, one of the reasons why I know this yeah, stuff yeah, is I that. Um, I have to, I have to that Sorry, guys. Okay, I see. No problem. One of the reasons I know this stuff, Ali, is that um, my secondary duty in the RAF was was um, working in the nuclear nuclear chemical and biological warfare decontamination cell. So, had there been an attack, we were responsible for um, making sure that uh, everybody stayed safe as they entered and exited the buildings, and um, you know put them through decont the decontamination processes um, to uh, to keep people safe. So, of course, we had to have a reasonable understanding of what we were dealing with, or could be dealing with, I should say. And in some previous governmental contract work that I did um, for the military, <clears throat> excuse me, we had to be educated in decontamination procedures and different types of radiation and how they affect uh, how they affect the human body and how they can be detected and and measured so uh, strictly uh, for like safety measures it didn't get in depth 
So I, I'm not I'm not trying to say that you know it was a full course on on this sort of thing. It was just you know safety uh, procedures and related information. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's that. That's what the uh, I kind of just got, uh, caught the last bit of it. But you you were saying it was just about uh, safety procedures on paid shows, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's well, what I've got as yeah. far as any kind that, of. That's that's what. The, yeah, that's what the guy. That that's what the the reason. But he was that that guy was just pointing out it was kind of more like a, a fear porn uh, kind of thing. It wasn't as dangerous, but I get what you're saying about the uh, the health and safety uh, aspect of it uh, kind of thing. But and, and frankly, as far uh, as Alan, as anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I want to tell you guys about this because this is this is like, a, you know, this is a shame for these old guys. They're old uh, veterans, man. And uh, well, you've got to watch the video soldiers, about it. The way, they, they, deserve, they deserve whatever compensation they can get. I mean, uh, ah, but they're fighting there. the British. Ah, but they're fighting the British government, right? There's, a, there's only about, I think, there's about five, five of these guys left, man. Every single one of them has died with cancer related, and, and you know, obviously it's it's uh, uh, it's because of uh, what they witnessed. But the thing was, was the fact you should hear them describing what they saw. That was the most awesome thing, and I thought, what the fuck were these scientists doing, man? Like, that's what I was thinking about, uh, and I'm not having a go at science, but it was the fact that it was like, oh, fuck sake, man. It was as bad as when they were uh, you know, exploding uh, nuclear weapons up in the uh, the air or whatever, or whatever they were doing up there. I, I just think sometimes the, the, you know, that, that shows the dangerous side of the, uh, this kind of, uh, that kind of science. That's nothing to do with the theoretical, but I'm saying that kind of science, that's, you know, I think they're just going a wee bit too far now yeah. Yeah, with stuff. But it's a great video to watch, and I feel it's really sad for these guys because, as I say, they were, you know, they were basically uh, fucking guinea pigs, man. Uh, they're not saying that, but you can obviously see that. Why would you have uh, a certain amount of boats spaced away, like five miles and then one ten miles and all that kind of thing? They got zapped uh, big time, so. And I, it does, it pisses me off when uh, when people uh, say that it's fake. You know, some of the film does look fake when they show that, and I, I totally get people, under, or I totally people uh, uh, understand people uh, sort of coming across with the conclusion, oh, look at that film, It's that was a model, look, it doesn't even act like real trees, man. But, you know, if you understand the force, you just have to listen to these guys describing it, and you really understand the force uh, of this, uh, them explosions, uh, or those explosions uh, that they made, however. But as I say, I don't think it's, I don't think it's maybe not as radioactive uh, as they say it is, perhaps, but who knows. Anyway, Hello, Alan. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Casual Spaceman. How are you? I wanted to I wanted to actually quiz you and uh, sort of pick your brains a little bit. You were talking about alpha and beta particles, um, and I wanted, um, if if I may, um, pick your brains related to that to the Val Allen belt. Um, obviously, I know, as you probably know, I know how they uh, got around the Val Allen belts, and I know what sort of dosages they received, and um, and all the rest of it. But um, when you were talking about alpha and beta particles and um, alpha beta, alpha particles, meaning that you, you can almost block it with almost anything because of the size of the particle. Is, is that correct? Yes. I've got that. Right? Yeah. And do and you know, do you know what, what, what sort of particles consist of the Val Allen belt and just to, just to sort of what quantities have you any ideas? I, how that works? Believe, I believe you will find alpha and beta up there. Any um, quantities or? I have absolutely no idea. I've no, I've never actually studied the Van Allen belts, so I can't, I cannot no, pass no. comments like that. I can say that um, those types of, you know, the, the 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 alpha and beta beta, the alpha will be you can because I've done the experiments A level physics at school. You got we yeah, actually yeah. had um, 
I've got a vague, I've got a vague recollection from school about alpha and beta particles, but it's probably yeah. Something. I mean, we actually had one of those um, classes I didn't pay very much attention to at the time, but which I you had. know, <laughs> it, it was great when they handed out the um, alpha and beta, you know, the, the the radioactive sources to the kids in class. It was brilliant. You know, um, uh, it appears the the inner belt is composed predominantly of protons, which would be beta particles. The outer belt mostly electrons. Uh, which would come to be named the Van Allen belts after James Van Allen, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, certainly... The most stop... did... So I suspect... I was going to say, the, the, most, uh, the most dangerous thing uh, is the uh, very high energy protons in yeah. the Van Allen yeah. belts. I mean, it, it, it would, I would suspect then what they've... Yeah, I suspect what they've done is they, well, they've gone through the thinner parts, which as well, we know that anyway. Um, yeah. So there's, prob there's um, probably more there's probably more alpha particles than there is beta and gamma and all the rest of it. I would yeah, well, the, the, it seems that there's mostly beta and beta you can stop with um, tinfoil. Right. Mostly. Okay. It's something a little bit so it's a little, a little bit a little bit smaller the than the higher. The, obviously, the higher the energy you impart with them, the further they will penetrate stuff. But um, yeah, you can certainly block. You can certainly block the particle type stuff with not too much stuff, especially if it's especially if it's heavier elements like aluminium and t you know, and tin and steel. You know, or all, all, all mostly the metals will 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 in two or th you know two or three millimeters of that will 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 make you pretty so, much safe. So we, um, so we can so we can say with fair amount of certainty that they were in the spacecraft and the flight suits they were pretty much protected from alpha and beta particles in the most part in, in, indeed they would be um th what i you know the, the the types of radiation i would be worried about up there would be the um the high energy photon stuff yeah gamma yeah. and all the rest of it that would be the most yeah, yeah the concerns oh. yeah and, um, so, me, so, the, so the doses that, that they actually received there was, was, as we know, was quite small, and apparently the the biggest amount that um, any of them received, I think, was in, I might be wrong, uh, Apollo 15 or something, and it was actually less than um, a nuclear power worker would actually get in the course of a whole year in one in one Apollo mission, as I understand it. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. One of their main certainly... worries was Bremsterlung radiation. Which I've got up here on the screen. So it's that actually a different type of radio. It's called Bremsterlung radiation. Oh, oh, okay, right. And it's it's produced. It's Bremsterlung is basically means breaking or stopping. Um, yeah. Any time yeah, I mean, yeah. uh, high energy particles are slowed down or stopped, they release a, a packet of of uh, non particle based radiation, which can backscatter at, or penetrate. So that was their primary worry when going through the radiation belts. It wasn't yeah. so much the electrons and yeah. the protons, but was, the was, was, radiation that was created via collisions of those particles with the outer skin of the the. Uh, the yeah, I was I was the, about uh, to say that um, you whack high energy electrons into in, into a metal to stop them, and you do have problems in that they can create um, X rays. So um, the thing is. Want, you would want to Nothing consider that. in the universe is being created same as energy sorry, mass. Say that, again. say that again adam sorry uh, nothing in the universe is being created it just changes the um the state Say it transforms. energy, it transforms. Oh, yes, yes, that's quite, you, you can't, yeah, exactly, you can't create yeah, energy, right. you can only uh, transfer it from one medium to another, yeah, I understand that, yeah. 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 Oh, it transforms, not transfers, it's called transformation. Transforms, big yeah. part like, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, no, no, I wasn't, so, yeah, so, just, I was just saying just clap. No, 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 that's, that's a fair comment, oh, no, it's important to get those kind of words right, because, you know, if in any kind of debate yeah. we're just... So, where yeah, was, does, I, I want, so, okay. I just, so, um, Adam, I've just got a quick question for whoever presented that. You, um, uh, the, uh, uh, so, they're actually, it's a different type of radiation. It's not like the same radiation. The alpha is a different radiation from beta, which is a it's different still, radiation. 
It's still an ionizing. Um, it's still an ionizing f- uh, electromagnetic photon that comes out. It's just that it's it's. Please, excuse a, me. You have a, you I have, have a question. I have a question. Hello. Hello. Yeah. I have a question. Where does this energy that uh, can I see? Okay, I will stop showing uh, video. Um, <laughs> can I see your uh, atom and electron thingy? Yeah. Shields, could you put that back up, please? Oh, the uh, Bremster lung radiation? Yes. Yeah, sure, not a problem. No, I meant to say, I appreciate you so, showing me that. Thanks very much. That was useful, actually. Thank you. Okay. You Thank you very much. So, uh, with this picture, we see that there is an, there is some energy being radiated. Yeah? Where yes. does this energy come from? It, it comes, comes from the breaking or the slowing down of the particles. Yeah. So the the projectile electron comes in and it is either um, it's, you know, it, it 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 loses some level of kinetic energy, and that kinetic energy is transformed into a either a high energy or a low energy X-ray photon. Depending on the amount of breaking that's that's happened. Depending depending on the amount of energy that the um, projectile electron has lost, um, <coughs> you it it gets converted into the um, photon, the you know the high energy or low energy uh, X-ray. Yeah. Photon. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, the um, wave or of energy being transformed out right basically one is at the higher out one is at the higher um frequency the other if is at the lower that's just because of the doppler effect okay no not no it's 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 a it's the amount of energy that has been bled off of that projectile uh as it's been uh as it's as its uh, uh, to, uh, vector has been changed. Uh, if the vector it collides, a lot, and... well, it, it doesn't have to collide. All it has to do is change <laughs> or uh, or collide. Either one. Um, but the more that it's the more that its vector is changed, the higher energy that Bremster lung radiation will be. Because okay. more energy has to be bled off of that that projectile. And when that energy is bled off the projectile, it has to go somewhere. So it goes off as X-rays of Bremsterling radiation. Yeah, um, you could say okay. you could say that was almost if if you likened that to if you like that uh, the that atom that's in the middle. If you likened that to the uh, and, and another, uh, if you liken that to a ball bearing, for example, and the other one was a ball bearing, and when it, I, I, I'll just use the clicking, it hits, it collides with it, it makes a click. And the energy, that's what I can't understand, that the energy would go out, it, I, I thought it would go out, you know, uh, what do you call it, yeah, isotropically just, or <coughs> homogeneous. Well, just, just How does it end up there. with different uh, different energies? Well, just um, as okay, imagine. Go. Let's go ahead and imagine it as billiard balls. Okay, as as one collides with the pack, um, it produces sound, right? Well, that sound could be considered that Bremsstrahlung radiation. It's a transformed energy. Yeah, that's it's what I was meaning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm and I'm agreeing completely. It's it's uh it's just a transformed energy. It's still energy. It's just a different type of energy. But yeah, but how do you get the two the two levels? Ah, but one second, sorry, because I want to know this. Uh, uh, how, how do you uh, get the two levels? How come there's there's like a but, high energy comes off it and a low energy? How does that if you, process the, it, amount, uh, the the amount that that vector that that uh, 
direction has been changed of the projectile. Yeah. It's only changed when, a little bit. It's only going to raise a, li a little bit of energy. But if it's if you follow that blue line, that blue arrow coming down. Yeah, I'll go on the, up. The, the, the vector has only changed a little bit. So it's going to release low energy. But the black one, as it's coming down, its vector has changed a lot. So it's going to oh, release right. a little Yeah, I've got you now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that makes so sense. So basically, it's that, it's that energy. The energy is pulled away from that projectile electron and transformed into x-rays, much as a billiard ball, if it collides softly, would produce a soft sound, or if it, if it hits hard, it's going to produce a loud sound. You know, it's just how much, uh, how much of that energy is converted from one form to another depends on um, how, how much the... Uh, how much the vector that, right, those vectors changed right so the exactly. so the yeah, higher the, the the higher the deviation of the um, electron the higher the energy essentially yes is that, is that correct I mean, yeah yeah when i was a radar tech one of the problems we had was we used a truck we used a power klystron for the transmitter and basically we would um we would hit the cathode with 110,000 volts at 100 uh, over 100 amps and it would um, kick off a whole load of very high energy photons uh, sorry electrons and um, of course with 110,000 volts they would be accelerated towards the um, anode which is at ground, fa ground uh, at um, earth potential um, <laughs> and um, so they they then get modul they then get modulated as they travel by some coils and stuff, but the important bit is that at the end they basically end up meeting the the cathode or the end of the valve, and um, we would get off a lot of that uh, brainstorm radiation as hard X-rays, which was why we had to keep the valve in a uh, a cabinet that was um, four inches thick in lead. We, yeah, I haven't heard it, of it called valves in years. It, um, yeah, the the, the, uh, the the transmitter cabinet door was um, about eight feet high and about five, four or five feet wide, and it weighed two tons. And that's uh, freedom ton, well, British freedom tons. Not the uh, metric type. So, what what is it about um, lead that makes it so good at um, shielding against radiation? Is it because of its mass is, is much denser per per volume yeah, than most materials? It, it has it has it has very large um, it has a very large nuclei, right? Um, okay. yeah. And so, it's very good at capturing those um, photons the, and the, other stuff that you fire at it. Yeah. And, 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 and having enough mass to hold it in. Yeah, even if it's gamma, it can still hold it. Right, okay. Can I ask a question then? Well, the yeah. I've, I've got a quick question. Osmium, and it's pretty rare, so the next one down the line is feasible as lead. So go ahead, Ellie. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, no problems. No problems. Uh, uh, I was going to ask, right, I was reading something, um, uh, some paper or something that, and I got the impression that all metals, they decay down to lead. I think there's only one that doesn't, but there's, or two or three, but they all decay down. You know, if they're left long enough to decay, they turn into lead. Would that be right in that's understanding? Not, no. Um, yeah, that's not no, definitely not. Definitely. No. Right, um, so why, why would I think, like, it was just something I read, right? I, Obviously, then I'm misunderstanding. What would I be uh, misunderstanding? Well, then? For something for something to decay, it has to be radioactive, and when it decays, that means it moves down the 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 list on the table of elements. Yeah. So it has to be first off, it has to be uh, a higher uh, molecular, or excuse me, elemental mass or uh, atomic mass than the uh, than lead. So it has to be. Yeah, well, lead's the lowest, doesn't let's it? Just say, yeah. No, it's no, the lowest in the scale, right? No, lead. lead is lead is pretty pretty high up there. Um, so so let's just let's just call it bigger. So 
uh, something's got to be bigger if it's going to decay down to lead. And as it's throwing these particles off through radioactive decay, it gets a little smaller and a little smaller until finally it becomes stable as uh, either an element uh, that's you know molecularly stable or lead, which is also stable. Yeah, um, but do you like guys not find that fascinating, right? Oh, sorry, but uh, do you guys not find that fascinating that another metal or another element or whatever can transform into uh, uh, another thing just through a natural process? Yeah, there's, is that there's not fascinating? Oh, it, I believe Ali is right on this one. I believe uranium does decay into lead. I believe yeah, I read that it. too somewhere. Uranium, yeah, uranium right, okay. Does, but, not, but not all metals. Ah, right. That's my apologies, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm sure a few do. I'm, I'm sure quite a few do. Oh yes, quite a few do. I'm, I'm showing. Yeah, but don't you think? Right how now. the hell? How the hell does that happen? You well, know what I mean? Like, let's, let's take a what look, metal? Let's take a look at, let, let's Sorry. take a look at what I'm, I'm showing here on the screen. Um, let's start with uranium two thirty eight. Okay, it emits an alpha particle, becomes thorium two thirty four. That, that emits a beta. And then it becomes uh, uh, P, 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 what the hell's PA? It's not palladium. Damn, I can't think. Anyway, it becomes PA-234. Then that emits a beta and becomes uranium-234. That emits an alpha, becomes thorium. Thorium emits an alpha, becomes radium. Now we're down in the purple. You see that? Yeah, yeah, I'm following you. I'm okay. following you. I'm, and then, oh, yeah, yeah. And then it releases I mean, it releases an alpha becomes radon gas. That's the yellow one. Now it gets back into polonium. And then it emits another alpha from polonium and becomes an unstable isotope of lead, uh, lead 214. It emits a beta, becomes bismuth 214. Emits another beta, becomes polonium uh, 214. Emits an alpha, becomes lead 210, which is unstable. Emits a beta, becomes bismuth 210, then polonium 210 after another beta. Finally, its last alpha emission, it becomes stable lead 206. Now, I find that absolutely fascinating. Uh, that's the nerd coming out here, it man. It, it is. It's Just to imagine. It's wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's, but that's nature, man. That's like, you know, if 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 that be true, if it, if it is, if there's how how long does that process actually take then? It Only a few time. million years. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, so uh, not so long then. <laughs> oh, and well, the half life. No, if, you, if you if you look sorry. up at the top at uranium two thirty eight, very top where they're kind of orange, you see that four point five e nine y. That's 4.5 billion years that it yeah, takes okay. for, for if you had a pound of uranium, it would take four and a half billion years for half of that to become thorium-234, which has a half-life of 24, uh, 24, uh, yeah, 24 days. Yeah. Oh, what, quick one off how, topic. How oh, it's the same how, topic. What's half-life? What what what's a half life? Sorry, guys. I, I need to half have to ask these questions. A remember, a, a half, half life. How do you get a half life? A half life is how much time does it take for half of the the stuff that you've got to decay into the next step? Thanks, Alan. I've got to go. Thank you. You're welcome, Casual. So, right, nice if, um, no. so if you had yeah. if you had a pound of uranium two thirty eight. How long would it take for half of that to become thorium two thirty four? Roughly four and a half billion years. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, what right. you have to remember is that's actually um, radioactive stuff with really long half lives is actually not very radioactive because it doesn't. You know, it, 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 if it takes four and a half billion years for, for, for to lose half of it, it's not it's, it's not having a decay event happening very often. If you yeah, it's not pushing off. If you, yeah, it's not you, pushing off loads of 
uh, particles. Yeah. You know, it's not going exactly. through it like that, but the quicker it yeah. is, it puts it's off more quick. intensity. Yeah, it, yeah. So um, actually, stuff with a really long half life is actually pretty safe from that. Think of it as a slow yeah. river. Yeah. Think Where of it as a that? slow, lazy river. Whereas, like, Pilon, oh, yeah, I knew this. Uh, I, I, I knew that thing about the half life. It was just I forgot it and I was just trying to for you to tell me because yeah, yeah, because I'm I'm interested in this kind of stuff. Whether whether I believe in the atoms or not, I, I still believe yeah. uh, the energy or the, the way it works kind of thing. It's straight. Because you, you know, know the Russians see, if you look at, at Polo- polonium. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, you know the uh, thing with the Russian with the Russians. Uh, Getting those people last year in in England and um, the the, uh, the the guy in the eighties with the umbrella with the umbrella thing he was zapped with. That I was remember with, that. That was that was done with polonium, and the, one of the reasons they use polonium is that the polonium has a half life of looking at that, 164 microseconds. That polonium two twelve. Look at that one. What a blast! What a bust! <laughs> he got man. That's instant. <laughs> yeah. So look at polonium two twelve. That's about a third of a microsecond for a half life. Yeah. 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 That's a blast of pure radiation or the purest form yes. of whatever. It is. Marie Curie yeah. Sklodowska. Yeah, and that's when it gets in you. That's when it really, really can mess you up. If it's outside of you, you got a chance. But once it gets in you, you're wrecked. Yeah. And polonium is also, I believe polonium is also poisonous to humans like plutonium is. Because yeah. um, you, get, you get involved, you get near plutonium, it's going to try and kill you twice because the radioactivity will try and kill you and plutonium is also the most toxic substance the most toxic substance known to man the the amount that will I don't know, poison I'll drink you. some cheap whiskeys <laughs> uh, the, yeah the amount the, the, the fatal the, the fatal dose from poisoning of plutonium is measured in micrograms as well so What do you guys think about the Chernobyl site? How um, accessible it is now uh, to animals and stuff shortly after this big disaster? Well, again, it, as, as we were saying, um, the, 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 the really bad stuff, the stuff with the short half-life, the stuff that's going to kill you, has already decayed, mostly. So the stuff that's there is the, is the stuff that's got the long half lives that is not giving you huge um, counts of beta, you know, alpha, beta, or gamma particles, and I think also a lot of what was a, a, a lot of what is there that is you know, that is dangerous is alpha emitters. So your you're wearing clothes it's you know it's not going to it's not going to penetrate your clothes you know you you can get it if you get it on you when you get home when you when you get out of the site you shower thoroughly yes you know, so that sh- shower thoroughly you're going to wash it all off it's not going to um it's not really going to hurt you a lot so yeah i'm not surprised that the animals are moving and of course the animals are going to move back in very quickly because there's no humans there. So... Yeah, but I don't think the animals are showering anywhere. True. But, what about um, the fish? The fish are always showering. Like, they're <laughs> thriving. I saw a documentary, and they're, besides the jokes, that the animals are thriving there. I find that funny. Well, um... Yes, but when tested, there's still an accumulation of radiation in their it's, systems. And they do have, I, I believe they do have a much higher preponderance to have cancers. Um, it's, 
say because because we because we're now we're in that phase where it's um, the pollution that is there is mostly get it is mostly alpha emitter. It and with very very long half lives, it's it it's radiating very slowly and you know as long as you don't. You know, as it is, it is surprising. But I think what we are seeing is we are seeing evolution in action, because what we're seeing is we're seeing the animals that um, the, the animals that are least affected by the radiation are the ones that are surviving and reproducing in that area. So, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent surprised that stuff is there because we have seen examples of um, very rapid evolution in other areas so we know that it, we know that evolution can happen that quickly especially when you've got uh, a uh, especially, when you, especially when you've got a, a, a niche environment that's got a particularly strong um push to favour one particular aspect. I don't think it's a sign of evolution, Alan. And and, and uh, before before anybody starts thinking anything, I'm not. Uh, I don't uh, particularly believe in God or anything. I'm not kind of a religious person, but I don't. I've I've listened to the argue argument from both sides and. It's all inconclusive to me. I don't have a horse in the race. You know, God's not going to. I don't think God's going to save me. I don't believe that. That is, you know, I don't. I don't wake up in the morning and think, you know, and pray to God and stuff like that. But I'm still not dissing the guy. But I hear the two stories. They just they've got as much evidence as each other, and that's taking it from someone that sits in the fence. I don't care. I'm not religious, so uh, and I don't care about uh, evolution. Or, but I, I think you uh, a lot of people are a bit too quick. Uh, you're rotating like mad again, mate. Sorry, we can't hear you. Good evening, everyone, or afternoon. Uh, All right. Oh, just. I, I just wish to uh, address Peter G's um, comment in the side chat. Uh, animals have less cancer problems than humans because of shorter lifespan. Most cancers take decades to develop and few animals live that long. And if I recall correctly, sharks just don't get cancer. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Hello, Matt. Hello, George. Um, Howdy. Hello, Hello Matt. <laughs> um, just a quick one to Montreal about uh, the fish at Chernobyl. Um, the actual cooling lake next to it, the fish, yes, they are surviving there, but they're dying. They're um, accelerated growth, and most of the large catfish are dying. Um, a very short life cycle. They're not living as long as they should do. And a lot of them are dying. They're accelerating growth and they're dying within that's a few catfish. years. Is that what you said? Yeah. Catfish? The fish, yeah. All the fish were living there. Yeah, but if you have a catfish in the lake, it'll eat everything and just get bigger. It eats everything. So, no, I mean, you can't really. Nothing to do with eating other. No, but you fish. can't say that. I'll tell you. If you get a catfish in a lake, it'll eat everything and it'll grow and grow and grow until everything's eaten. End of story. It's the predator. It'll just it'll just eat everything in a lake. All the fish there's, are trapped. So there's you lots can't really use eyes in No, they've done experiments down there, Hallie. There's lots of catfish in there and they're not eating each other. Yeah, but well, the catfish will eat them. They'll eat other catfish, man. <laughs> They'll eat anything. 
but they're nice. dying because catfish live for a long time, but these are actually dying. Yeah, because they're running out of food. Oh, but they're running yeah. out of food, man. They're if not, I can't... They're accelerated growth, Wait, Ali. One second. One second, right. It, a lake, right? It's a container, right? Okay, so a catfish... Right? I can't, I've, I've seen huge lakes. I've got friends with uh, huge lakes, and they've drained... Uh, they drain them to get... Because uh, some fucker put a catfish in it. And it was eating all his, uh, uh, all his fish, and it was just getting bigger. As I say, it took him a couple of years to suss out and disappear. But the point I'm say saying is, they will eat everything in the lake, and that's a container. Everything is up for that. They'll even eat, eat other catfish as well. So to use that as an example of a, a declining population, you put a catfish in the lake, my friend, and it'll, it'll eat it. It'll eat yeah, everything. Growing. You have nothing left. Out fishing Yeah, Ali, they're growing extremely fast. You know, I don't know the exponential of them, of the growth rate, but they're dying. They're dying really quickly, but they're growing quickly because catfish normally live, you know, tens of years. These are dying within 10 years. Oh, they love the they live a lot longer and they're huge. Uh, uh, yeah, but anyway, I'm not quite correct, but I'm, I agree with you. They live long in catfish. They're huge. Yeah, but they're but not. They do, they eat everything. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah, but I quite I'm agree. Saying, how how but do they grow? And this is a. This is a You're how do they, really have bad. Found out? You're roboting. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. What about this one, two, one, two, better? We got better. it. Yeah. Ali, it seems to work best. It seems to work best if you keep it to short sentences. <laughs> I you... think a catfish is eating them. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm right. seriously. The thing about food in that lake, well, as well. Uh, 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 sorry, Ali. Oh, please, please let me finish because I'm going to agree. I'm actually going to. I'm, I'm going to disagree with myself now. So I'm going to ask <laughs> a, a, a uh, if, if, because I know catfish eat everything, so that there will be a shortage of food. So, uh, uh, if they find out, what do you mean they're growing too quickly? If, if you know, are, are they growing? You know, because you have to, you know, eat to go, right? You could also say there could be something wrong with like, I'm not getting any of this. Too quickly, you know. I think you're coming I in and trapping the robot. I think there could be something wrong with the water. It doesn't make them grow too quickly, you know. Thanks. Sorry, guys. I'll, I'll just mute. I've got a bad connection. All uh, right. The thing, though, about that lake is the, all the tourists that are going there now, one of the most popular activities is actually to bring food and put it into the lake to see the catfish feeding. So there's no yeah. shortage of food. No, that's all, the, that's all the species what live in that lake as well. They're all rapidly growing because of the dose of radiation they've got. And it's that's not good for the wildlife. Yeah, but shouldn't all the fish be dead, gentlemen? There they should are be dying. no fish, right? No, no. They're, 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 not to, they're not going very to die hardy. that quickly. Yeah, catfish <laughs> are very hardy. Um, there's there's many different species, but what's happening over there is part of the fish are they're they're growing uh, too quickly, and parts of their bodies aren't growing with them. Uh, so, so we'll say gills or something like that aren't growing to meet the exact same size as what they what they're growing to. Yes, and they've got exceptionally large heads, heads for the size of the actual fish because they've actually tagged them. And their heads are actually huge compared to the body. Yeah, that's, that's quite sad, really. Huh. But anyways, what did I miss, anyone? What happened to Tom Tom? He refused to enter because we, I wouldn't make everybody leave so that he could enter on his own. Because I'm, I've seen him do it before. He'll have everybody leave, um, then faff around for 15, 20 minutes not coming in, and then bugger off. 
Oh, right. And so, kill the stream. Uh, you know, so, that, so, so that the whole thing will be a fiasco. And then he'll go away and crow about it. So, so um, he, yeah. Yeah, I get you. And he'll go away and tell everyone how he, he demolished everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so he never came yeah. in. Thanks. Never he thinks I'm a special agent. He thinks I'm an agent. <laughs> <laughs> he, does. he does, man. There's a load of them. There's a load of them that do. It's quite funny, actually. You know, but as I say, this is a really great conversation, by the way, guys. I like talking about the atoms and all that kind of stuff. That was a good point um, uh, Montreal brought up. Though. That was about... Because it was filmed just a few years after. Uh, it happened, you know, because I, re I remember, you know, years and years ago before I got into Flat Earth, about video, guys were going into videos and it was just a forest again, and there was wild animals and everything, but as I say, it's like what you said, the alpha part, uh, the gamma, or the ones with the fastest decay burnt off the quickest, I suppose, you know. Yeah. You know, can't. Um... You know, it's, it's not I get it. It's a, good, it's, a great, it's a good explanation. You know, when I do it myself, I believe about, a, you know, obviously there's a, a certain rays that we can't see and do cause us harm, and some that don't cause us harm, uh, kind of stuff. So it's yeah, quite I mean, interesting it, how it's, we are it's all, from. It's all bad for you. It's just that um, it's differently. It's differently bad for you so you know um alphas actually cause a lot of damage when they cause damage they just um yeah you know, they, they they just tend to be very easy to get rid of you know the, the because of because they come from other particles that you can get you know, that you, and they're very short range um they're they're they're, stop, they're stopped by five to ten centimeters of air. So, if I remember correctly, yeah, you're quite um, correct. I have a fun, I have a fun fact. Um, Chernobyl didn't close until uh, what was it, two thousand? Chernobyl was still open for uh, all those years. They only closed down the broken reactor, then the uh, subsequent ones closed down, and then finally the last one closed down in 2000. That's mad. Well, there you go. Yeah, that's, do you know, that's, that's funny. Uh, that's funny how, do you know, it's like, uh, well, not when you go into the conspiracy, but it's funny how we get a different story over where we live uh, kind of thing from... Uh, you know what really happened just like that uh, gentleman just said there about how you know there was still a couple in operation and then they uh, closed it down kind of thing but that could be do a uh, secret, uh, secret you know with Russia or something but here's a question I want to ask you guys because I don't often get a chance to talk I, about this I, I think uh, what do you think about part, space I think, I think a big part of the um us, you know, what what we were told in the in the press in Western, you know, in the West at that time, comes from the fact that it was the middle of the Cold War. You know, and um, so the Soviets mm -hmm. wouldn't want to let on anything at all to the West uh, about bad stuff happening, and the Western governments weren't beyond using it as um, propaganda to make the populace fearful in in the west you know it's it, it, it so so that kind of information you know the way the information was portrayed at the time um you have to look at it in that light in that it was in that it was actually a, an event in a long-running geopolitical dispute between the two great superpowers of the world at the time. Could, could, could you... So you, you could be uh, possibly possibly saying that the media kind of... Not, not, not uh, 
I can't use the word lied because everybody calls everybody liars now. It's kind of like getting old, but I'm saying the, um, uh, the, the, the obscured, the obscured, the obscured facts a little bit mm. or exaggerated a little bit. Let, let's, just, let's, just, let's just say journalists, I, I believe yeah. journalists are especially lazy people. And so it's much easier just to follow the party line because you get that info handed to you, Alan. essentially handed to you. Yeah, now, Alan, you're, you're, how old are you? Uh, well, I'll tell you my age first. I'm 54 years I'm 55. old, right? How old are you I'm then? 55. I'm 55. Right, there you go. You, right, okay. So you, you should have added on these days journalists because if you remember in the old days if you watch like nationwide or oh, david yeah, dimbleby they, or all yeah, these but, guys when they got a hold uh, and david uh, david frost when these guys got a hold of politicians there were they got there were, there were they got some wrecked. very there were there was don't get me wrong there were some very good um Reporters, and especially some investigators, yeah, especially investigative reporters. You've only got to look yeah. at the um, Manchester Guardian hit squad that they had. That um, that I, f I forget the name of, but they they were renowned for breaking those types of stories. But um, you know, on the whole, if 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 all of the information that's easily available is um, pointing you in one direction. That's probably the way you're going to end up going, unless you're really, really trying to dig for a cover-up. And I don't think it was. And I don't think it was a deliberate cover-up. It was just the state of the times. Yeah, and that, that yeah, I know. But do you know what? Do you, do you know because these. These uh, or, or the uh, politicians or whatever, you know, I think sometimes uh, they don't give us enough credit then because I think they should be a bit more honest and tell us what's going on. If they're trying to protect us, you know, so oh, we better not tell the people because they might panic or, or they might get a bit fearful. Sometimes I think they underestimate us or... You know, it gives me the, the impression that they don't think much about us or they don't think that we uh, could kind of solve uh, the problem or help to solve the problem or give suggestions, no, you know, when they hide stuff. I don't think it was that. I think it was just that... Um, remember, we didn't have... The, remember, this was before the internet... This was before widespread public access to the internet this is before the world wide web so you know we, I, I know that we've got people here from mainland Europe the UK um, the Americas uh, Australia and Texas yeah, pretty much pretty, and, and, and Texas and you know and all over the world and we are all able to get together and chat without any um, overwatch from the without any real overwatch from the government pre preventing us from doing it. Um, at least in most, you know, at least in a goodly chance. At the moment, the globe now. Um, at the moment, and, yeah. Um, and, it, and it's not costing us a huge amount of money. I mean, could you imagine? Could you imagine what it would have cost for a, a conference call with uh, twenty people in it uh, for two and a half oh, hours dude. back in the eighties? <laughs> well you'd have to. Read. You'd have to rent a satellite, and you know what they cost. And that, uh, by the way, I do believe in satellites, so you don't worry. I know uh, about. Yeah, I was going to say, cost, I think you mean a satelloon. <laughs> Saloon. <laughs> yeah, saloon, not a satellite. Oh, uh, uh, guys, guys, that's 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 old stuff now. That's not going to be the new thing. It's going to be raccoons. That's what they called the poop. <laughs> I, and but by the way, I don't believe. You know, I I know they're putting these things up, but I believe in uh, I believe in satellites. I know fucking satellites exist. But uh, I've I've shared the link uh, with. Some people and it's called they're called raccoons 
And the video is, it's called The Crazy Way Scientists Put Up Rockets. And it's basically, they put up a balloon and then they launch a rocket from the balloon. And I thought, what a great experiment for some flat earthers to do to get that extra height. See if we can get into space. <laughs> up to that bit that it starts, you know, everybody starts floating. You know, we seem to float up there. And that's quite a good... I want to ask you guys, uh, what what do you actually think about space is? What, what do you think the medium uh, of it is? And do you think it's like a hostile environment? Very hostile. But you can extrapolate on that. You can, you know, why or, you know, if you think about what the, what, a, what a human needs in order to survive, we need air, we need water, we need food. None of those are available in space. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's that's about mm -hmm. as, Oh, and we need to be within a. I was actually wanting to talk. Sorry, sorry. I was actually wanting to talk about radioactivity and you know the uh, the energies right. or a uh, gas cloud or whatever. And the micro things. I want to talk about. I don't want to talk about the food and that kind of stuff. I want to talk well, about the that's effect. That's where I was just. That's where I was just starting out. Because then you got to get into the temperature thing. Because the side of you right, that's so facing yeah. the sun, the side of you that's facing the sun is going to start getting broiled. The side of you that's facing away from the sun is going to start freezing. You know. So then you got the temperature difference. Well, then you got radiation bombarding you from coronal mass ejections. You got all this ionizing radiation blasting into you. It's about as hostile as an environment can get. And do you think that's why they've not went back to the moon? I, 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 I think we landed on the moon. Sorry, Montreal. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. You know, I, I've, I've got it's, plenty of flat earth people that I talk to. They know I believe in the moon landings. But do you think that's why they've never actually... No, cost is the main reason they haven't gone back. Cost. Well, no, it, yeah. it's primarily political. I don't think so. I think it's what Unpaid Shells was talking about. The Russians, there, man. the Russians were kicking our ass back in the 60s. I mean, they launched Sputnik, they launched Yuri Gagarin, they launched Lyaka. Um, you know, they Lyaka was the dog. Uh, you know, they, they put all these things first. And America was was back on its heels, going, "Holy shit!" You know, what what are we gonna do? We better get a man on the moon. That's the big one. Yeah. And yeah. so all of America's energies at NASA were focused on that project. <laughs> get mankind to the moon. <laughs> Put our flag on that ball. Four hundred thousand people were invested in that space program. Yeah. Four hundred thousand people. Do you know what? You know Once something it was done. I think, oh, go ahead. I think, go ahead. So I think had Kennedy not been assassinated, there is a good chance that that would have been dropped for economic reasons. Because you know, even for you know, or at least allowed to slide a lot further. Um, yeah, you know, because because let's face it, you put an awful lot of gold into that, and.